It's so stupid, it's positively brilliant. Yep, Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots, and uh, today's show is brought to you by BetterHelp, man. Whatever struggles you are facing, from depression and anxiety to trauma and grief, BetterHelp can connect you with a professional counselor in a safe and private online environment. It's so convenient. You can schedule secure video or phone sessions as well as chat and text with your therapist. And anything you share is completely confidential. Best of all, it's a truly affordable option. Our listeners even get 10% off your first month with the discount code IDIOT. So why not get started? Simply go to betterhelp.com slash idiots and fill out a questionnaire to get matched with a counselor you'll love today. It is a great day to start uh, the show off with BetterHelp because today is World Mental Health Day, okay? So yes, it is a good day to start off with that, you know? Um, Are there any like crossover with these days? I feel like everything is a fucking day. <laughs> no, it's, uh, October 10th right? has been World Mental Health Day for a while. It, it's, it's actually an official day. It's not like National Vanilla Bean Cheesecake Day. You slash know Puerto Rican flag day, yeah, slash yeah, yeah. whatever. <laughs> it's not. It's not one of those. Every if, uh, every day on Breakfast Club, I look at a list of of what national the holidays. Is? It's the weirdest shit in the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, who makes up these days? Uh, even better, who celebrates this shit? Yeah, you know and I, mean? I hardly celebrate the big ones. I'm definitely not giving a fuck about National Cheesecake Day. Now listen, yeah, National Steak and Blowjob Day. <laughs> I never got a steak or a blowjob on well, National Steak and Blowjob Day. You need to introduce your woman to that holiday. So this is that's like the Valentine's Day for men. Right? I would say so. But I like, would say so. Your girl doesn't already do that. She doesn't already. Yeah, give but you it's, a, a it's, it's, it's a difference when she has to. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like it's different when she has to because the day Yo. calls for it. Like I can't just say fuck your birthday. Fuck Valentine's Day. I can't just say fuck Christmas. I have to do something. People say it's the thought that counts. That's bullshit. No, it's the it's, have to. It's the, it's the have to. It's the have to yeah, that it's counts. The, the expectation. I'm looking Whoa. forward to this shit. What's up? Yeah, you're not taking out the trash. You got your feet up. That's like, it. hey, I'm hungry and my balls are full. I didn't do shit yeah. to earn this other than the my, day calls for it. My stomach is empty and my balls are my full. My balls are full. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Yo, we got a we got a special guest here. It's our guy. That's right, man. We got DJ Head in the motherfucking building. West Coast. West Coast. DJ Head from Real 92.3 LA. Uh he's on the new show Rhythm and Flow. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I think fucking uh, on the regular. <laughs> I can tell by Hold on. I can tell by his smile and the way his skin glowing. Did we finish the ad? Oh yeah, we did. That's I don't it. know if we did, yeah, but let's go to betterhelp.com. <laughs> oh, you did? Yeah, I did it. <laughs> Listen, we need some better help. <laughs> we need some better help reading this ad. Yes. Listen, our, our listeners get uh, 10% off of your first month with the discount code IDIOTS. So why not get started? Simply go to betterhelp.com slash idiots and fill out a questionnaire to get matched with a counselor you'll love today. Oh, yeah, I definitely said that. You did? I remember, yeah, I remember saying that about the counselor. Oh, my bad. We All got right. church announcements. If Everybody got church announcements? We got... We do got church. I was okay. wanted to hear about him getting pussy, but we could do church yeah, announcements. We'll get back to that. All right, fine. <laughs> okay. So, uh, uh, October 26th, Palm Beach, Florida. Okay, Matador Tour coming. Then the first, I'll be in Chico, California. Second, third, Sacramento. Uh, 14th, Norwalk, Connecticut. Uh, 16th, Boston. 22nd, New York. More dates added. TheAndrewShows.com. Get those tickets before they are gone. Several of those shows already sold out, so get on it, get on it, get on it. Yeah, it's so crazy. I don't know where the fuck I'm gonna be at. I, I, I know I'm gonna be at A3C Festival tomorrow. Um, A3C. Yeah, A3C in uh, Atlanta. Okay. Uh, me and Ti are on a panel there. So I'll be out there on, tomorrow. Um, I don't even know what time and whatnot, but I'll be there. Um, what else I want to? Oh, I, I I put I set up a YouTube page. Hey. Yeah, you know, um, for whatever reason, people don't think it's really mine. <laughs> what is it? It's see to God. C T H A G O D. I can understand why they don't think it's mine though, because there's so many pages out there that like they either the radio guy or they're Charlemagne right. the God or they're whatever. Mine is youtube.com backslash C to God. And you can tell it's mine because it's really just like a lot of the one-on-one -on -one interviews that I've been doing. Um this week I put up an interview I did with Chance the Rapper and T.I. Yes. Um the Netflix for Netflix. Yeah. Um and you know, uh, Netflix named it State of the Flow. I see y'all in my comments. Talking about oh you 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 biting Joe Budden with with state of the culture, and I'm like no Netflix named it state of the flow, but let's be clear me and Duvall had a web series back in the day called Hood State of the Union, yeah. okay, and, and let's also be clear Tax Tone had a show before he went to jail called the Pull Up, 
Right. So please stay out my comments with that Joe Budden shit. Like, get <laughs> the fuck out of yeah, here. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, like yeah. motherfuckers say, even when I do a one on one interview, they're like, oh, you biting Joe Budden? No, I'm biting Diane Sawyer and Barbara <laughs> Walters and Oprah, okay? And Dan Rather, not Dan Rather, um, what's dude name that used to be on 60 Minutes? Dan Lauer? Not Dan Lauer. Matt Lauer. Not Matt, definitely not Matt Lauer. Matt Lauer <laughs> catching at me. Three, <laughs> four, Lord five, mercy. six. That motherfucker won't quit. <laughs> he's, a, he's a gun. He's an M16. <laughs> he's a M16 out this motherfucker. But yeah, but it is a YouTube page. It's up. I just put up a girl uh, interview yesterday with the cast of Girlfriends. Hey. Um, Jill Marie Jones, Tracy Ellis Ross, Golden Brooks, and Persia White. You know, that was some bucket list shit for me because I'm a big, huge Girlfriends fanatic. So I got a few more. I got a lot more in the can, actually. Good. I, got about, I got about five more I'm going to put out. This year, sick man. Yeah, and that, that's it's a scary feeling. Why? It's a scary feeling because we built up the Breakfast Club page, and the Breakfast Club page got like four million unbelievable subscribers. You know, it does like fifty million a month or some silly shit like that. Right, that's crazy. And you know, when you say to yourself, you know what, I'm gonna start doing my own content and putting it out there. You want to be Beyonce. Do I want to be Beyonce? No, yeah. I want to be Charlamagne. No, I'm just fucking with you. Meaning, like, you don't want to be part of the the. I'm, I'm just the group. I want to be Charlamagne. Huh? I'm Charlamagne. I don't know what to tell y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm me. I'm Lenard. Like I am. But we know you're Charlamagne. I'm my own individual. But you like doing something outside of Breakfast Club as of, well. Of course. There it is. I mean, that's why yeah. I, ca I came up before that doing that. Though. Now I heard you and Angela Yee have an interview uh, thing coming out. Where Never. the two of you guys just interview each other. No way. <laughs> no way. No way, Jose. But not nah, go subscribe to it. YouTube.com uh, backslash C to God. C-T-H-A-G-O-D. Got some cool shit coming on there. I love it, man. What do you get credit for? Hello? Taylor's saying she need to get credit. What do you need to get credit for? Taylor, tell me. Oh yeah, Taylor edited the girlfriend's interview for. Nobody um, care about that anyway. For the, for, the, so, for the Breakfast Club. So look, yeah, so yeah, look. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Can I tell you how crazy Taylor is? Taylor <laughs> literally had like a stroke mid conversation <laughs> with us today. No. So she goes like this. She goes. She goes. Uh, she goes out of nowhere. She goes. You want to hear an interesting fact? And I was like, I was like, yeah, sure. She goes. The top three STDs in New York. Gonorrhea. No, no, no. She just stopped. <laughs> <laughs> she just stopped the sentence. That's a good tease. No, no, it wasn't a tease. She stopped and went back to her work. And, and me, Alex, me, Alex, and Dwayne sitting here like, You're on the edge of your seat. Yo, like, do I got one? Like, what's up? Like, like, and then we had to explain to her that that wasn't a fact. She thought that that was enough to be a fact. No, you gotta she just finish. Said, you gotta tell them what it is. What the fuck they are? Yeah. She's like, Oh, you wanna know what they are? Oh, okay, chlamydia, gonorrhea. They're all curable. What'd I say? Yeah, it's all curable. <laughs> it's gonorrhea, <laughs> chlamydia. I forgot the third one was. Syphilis. All curable Come shit. on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I got the flu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> dick flu. I will say, I'm not get, worried. If you're burning in 2019, something wrong with you, bro. Grow up. You've been going to DR. Grow, grow, the, <laughs> grow up. <laughs> grow up, grow man. Up. Getting burned at 2019? You're a grown-ass human? Yeah. <laughs> Why you said it like See, that's that? That's childish, bro. That's childish, bro. Think about it. All the time, listen. All it's the time. Some man shit. You don't remember all the you times you heard about getting burned? When so, you was in, you heard that in high school. Like, you got yeah. burned. Yeah. 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 Childish shit, man. <laughs> but now, adults. Adults shouldn't get STDs. A especially not gonorrhea. Imagine being 40 years old at the urinal pissing and burning. That's gonorrhea, the one that pisses when yes, you hurts man. when you pee. Yes, man. Puss coming out your dick you at work. Like, Whoa. Who? You mad at everybody? I think in college, too. Like, college, it was a thing. Yes. I remember I had a scare. Like, I, I had a ingrown hair, but I, I just started having sex at 18. Oh, you so thought like, it was a herpes? I thought it, bro. I thought my lot was going to die. Yeah. I asked, the, I asked the, the lady in the student health club. I'm like, I was like, yo, am I going to die? And, it, and then she just looked at me, and she was laughing. I was like, no, like, for real. Like, I need to know. I got shit to do. And she was like, no, this is an like ingrown live? hair. And I was like... What is that? Because <laughs> I ain't never had nah, one before. Nah, I be feeling that shit too. When you get them ingrown heads, you don't know what that shit is, bro. Uh, I got scared. Like, they, what the they, fuck they, is living in dormant in me? That's ingrown. I've, I've seen that shit on girls, bro. I've seen some wild shit on girls' pussy, and I'd be like, that's an ingrown hair. I think it look crazy. Because right. I'm not giving up this pussy. <laughs> you convince, you convince <laughs> I convinced yourself. myself. <laughs> that shit looks like yourself. full wart. And I'm like, nah, that's an ingrown hair. <laughs> it look crazy on white people, though. What, the ingrown hairs? Yeah. Because yeah. it's, like, it's like red and like look infected. Yes, but y'all get way more because your hair is so much curlier. That's a fact. So I don't know That's how to grow fact. straight out. It's like razor bumps on your dick. Exactly. That's oh. all it is. You need bevel. <laughs> I, told, yeah. I told my wife the other day I wanted the motherfucking, I wanted to get rid of all my pubic hair, yo. Yo, 
I w- want to laser together. You want to go together and laser? I'm with it. Can we do that? Dead ass? I don't want that nah. shit, bro. Dude, so you. I don't want it on my balls. And I, I, the I, older I, you get, you get sorry. that shit. That on shit your is just leg like a little? Here. Yeah, dude. <laughs> that shit look dumb. I know. I got to fade my shit. And then I got one gray on the left side. And I got a, <laughs> a strong gray, too. You got a gray pubic hair? I got a hair? strong gray, bro. It's, it's a, dude. A strong one. Like, you know how somebody walk in the room in their bed and you can see that one little gray? Like Damian Lemon would have yes. that strong on his chin. I got a strong gray hair on my dick, bro. I'm like, man, I am old. You heard that David <laughs> Tell joke? No, nah, what is it? I found a gray pubic hair today. Uh, don't worry, it wasn't mine. <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. Have you seen Deion Cole's stand up special? No, but it good? I haven't seen it. Everybody keeps saying how good it is. Uh, he's I great. Like Deion Cole. Cole is great. I haven't seen, I haven't seen him in a minute. Yeah, you But they're saying it's on that Chappelle. Uh, Bill Burr level of yeah. not giving a fuck. Yeah, yeah, he's he's unique. He's uh, he's got great delivery. He got a great voice too. No, no, Dion's funny, man. I gotta. Watch I never heard it. you yeah. say anything bad about a comic. Ah, uh, yeah, you That's don't do that. True. No, not on not on like this. Oh, got you. Got yeah, I've never yeah, heard him true. say anything like, oh no, he's terrible. Like no never shit. on this. I because right. that's G code. It's like you know that's our thing. Yeah. We talk about our shit. We handle it with us. If a comic steals, that's different because you broke the rules. Oh, okay. So so if he tells on you, you allowed to snitch on him. Or if he, yeah, exactly. Well, I guess, <laughs> no, I don't know how the snitching shit works, mm-hmm. but like if you could, for example, like if Carlos Mencia is stealing jokes, right? He was out there stealing jokes. So the community was like, yo, you're, you're, you're out. It's done. You're He's stealing jokes. Out. Exactly. Damn, I ain't heard that name in forever. Well, that's why. Got him out of there. Wow. Yeah. Y'all worse than the mob. We don't no, play No, y'all around. worse than Trump. Yeah, you, you y'all know who the- we're worse than, but you don't want <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> 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 That's Stephen A. Smith. Hey, man. Hey, listen. Salute to the Jewish people. All right? Salute to the Jewish unit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Jew- no, I'm, not, I'm not even saying I'm not even showing it. Them, listen, I have no problem with the way they move. And the reason I have no problem with the way they move is because they have struck a fear in people and people know not to fucking play with them. I think they look out for their own. I don't know what it is, but I just know people know not to fucking play with them. Stephen A. Smith, and, I, and now that I hear it again, I understand what Stephen A. Smith was trying to say. He was like, you don't hear nobody outside of the Jewish communities talking X, Y, and Z because people know to watch their fucking mouth when talking about the Jewish community. Six nine snitch on everyone but the Jews, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't see them ask him. They yeah. asked him. They like, yo, what's up with these 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 apartment buildings that they got mad people living in? They're charging crazy rent. I don't know nothing. Nothing, bro. That's what he said. I don't know. Listen, it's because they it's because they have proven throughout time they don't bullshit. When you fuck with them and say something that they don't like, or you insult them in some way, shape, or form, there's nothing wrong with that. By the way, cancel culture? Cancel culture ain't nothing but what they've been doing. That's what everybody's trying to adopt. Everybody's trying to be able to shut shit down the way they shut shit down. Yeah, but cancel culture is a little different because there's people with no power trying to shut down people. That's my point. They want power. Yeah, but... They don't have the power that the the, the Jewish conglomerate got. Yeah, but the the Jewish conglomerate has power. Yes. Right? So they actually can do it to protect their interests. Like some fucking nerd in a basement that's like tweeting at somebody is gets off on the fact that a corporation, a billion dollar corporation, bends to his whim. By the way. Or her whim. You're that's right. where they get their rocks off. You're right. And a corporation, a corporation, first of all, they don't even have to lift a finger. And they don't really have to lift a finger. As soon as you open your mouth to say something slick, that corporation will get rid of you before the smoke even comes. Right. Mm-hmm. By the time the smoke comes, they're like, oh, we got rid of him already. Don't yeah. even worry about it. And no smoke. What you mean? There's no smoke. Wasn't even a fire. It's gone. Got rid of him. Oh, it's gone. Yeah, right. yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. You're right. You see, Stephen A. Smith couldn't even finish his sentence. Molly cut that shit off. Hey, Molly. Hey. <laughs> she, 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 she know how to distract people. She took a knee. She, she bought a Colin Kaepernick. Uh, Colin Kaepernick. Yeah, yeah, Colin Kaepernick. Like, that's, that's literally what she did. She literally, she Colin knew exactly Kaepernick. how to deflect. John Carlos, she had a no, fist no, up no, in there. No, no, no. Colin Kaepernick. <laughs> like, what? That got nothing to do with <laughs> What the fuck are we talking about? Colin Kaepernick. OJ Simpson on Twitter when we're back. Let's go to commercial. <laughs> <laughs> like, what? Wait, 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 what is happening? It's commercial. All right, you said you saw the Joker. Oh, but by the way, let's put a button on that. Salute to the Jewish community. <laughs> you are respected. Tov, hey, man. I don't know what Andrew just said. You are respected. All right? Mm-hmm. Now, we saw the Joker, right? Mm-hmm. So, uh, best movie. It would have been a perfect film except for one scene. Really? But, like, Heath Ledger, rest in peace, doesn't even come close. 
to Joaquin Phoenix. Damn. Doesn't even come close. And you got to consider something. So Oscar winner you talking about. Oh, they won't give the Oscar to him because that whole shit is corrupt anyway. Like all these, you know, uh, award shows. But the, uh, but his performance was unreal. And you have to consider this. Heath Ledger was in The Dark Knight for 30 minutes. He's a side character. Heath Ledger is in every scene of The Joker except for Joaquin Phoenix. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Joaquin, Joaquin Phoenix. Phoenix yeah. Is in he was only in Batman for 30 minutes? Time. Screen time. Screen time, 30 minutes. Nah, it had to be more than that. How many scenes do you remember him in? Cop the car. scene, blowing how, the shit up. The cop the car, scene, while in. The dinner at the top of the building. And the meeting with the mob. Meeting with the mob. And the, dude, the, the, the scene where the, the, the bank in the beginning. And he barely in that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you don't even yeah, know yeah. if it's him, actually. He's, like, walking, but he's yeah, covered. Yeah. Wow. No, no, don't get me wrong. Amazing performance on his behalf, but he didn't have to carry every scene of yeah. the film. I heard, I heard, I heard Joaquin, Joaquin, whatever. What? He's Ray not Kwan. black, bro. I heard He's Kwan. not black, bro. Jay Stop Kwan. trying to make him black, bro. Kwan. It's Joaquin. I heard Jaquan is in every scene, every scene getting tipsy. Is what I heard. That's what I heard. So he was dancing like one of these model bitches yeah. at like One Oak. He had his hands in the air, dude. I'm going to go see it as soon as I get some time, yo. Oh, dude. I don't mind you spoiling the DC movie. So it was a scene you said. <laughs> it was a scene you said. He, I'm not that, spoiling nothing. But there, you said it was one scene that would have everybody shooting people. Uh, No, it. Okay, there's one scene where they basically like deliver the message of the film. Mm -hmm. And the message of the film is when you take already mentally ill people and you isolate them, you don't give them any help, you ignore them, and then you, on top of that, bully them, their only recourse is this. Yeah. So it was almost justifying it. Mm. Now, they explain that deliberately in the scene. Like the Joker almost breaks character to say it. And I'm like, ah. Why'd you have to break? Why'd you have to do the Hollywood thing where you give the messaging? And then when I walked out after a couple of days, like thinking about it, I was like, holy shit. If they didn't do that, people would just be in the streets shooting people up. Because the messaging of the film outside of that will be, well, if somebody bills you, just fucking kill them. And then everybody will be, you'll be everybody's hero. But do you think that that was intentionally placed in the film for that reason? They shot the scene apparently multiple times in multiple different ways. Wow. And... It's so different. Like the scene has this beautiful arc where he goes from like, he goes from a person with like no control, no agency, no nothing whatsoever. He's just so vulnerable and like pathetic. And then he slowly via killing people who kind of like have bullied him have like, he totally turns into the Joker. And then in that one scene in the, the late night talk show, and I'm not really ruining anything for the movie in the late night talk, you talk shot show. Robert De Niro in the head. I can't tell you what happened. You never know what happened. You'd have to see the movie to know. Yeah. But in that scene, that's when he should come to fully form Joker, right? So he's like, in the beginning, mumbling and insecure. By that scene, he should be charming, charismatic, take over the room, own the fucking spotlight Joker. And he walks on to the talk show like that. He has all the confidence. You're like, oh, fuck, he finally, this is the Joker we now know. And then all of a sudden, like, reverts back to it to deliver this message, which sucks. But there's one other part... I think what a lot of people are missing about this movie is that, like, I don't think the Joker that is Joaquin Phoenix mm. is the Joker that we know. Because the age discrepancy between Batman and the Joker would be too much. Oh, no. Joker's, Joker's older on purpose. He is older. He is much older? Yeah. And I don't, know, I don't know if he's much older, but in the comic books, the Joker's definitely older than uh, Bruce Wayne. Because, you know, in, in yeah. the comic books, Joker kills Bruce Wayne's parents. parents. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well. When Bruce Wayne was a kid. Right. Yeah. So Bruce Wayne is four. I mean, there's a wild thing I don't want to give away that is so cool in the movie about like the origin story between Joker and Bruce Wayne. There's some connectivity there. He's like, his dad. I didn't know anything. I never read that in the comic book about him being his dad. No, they added this. It could be no, or it could not I'm, be. The reason I'm throwing shit against the wall is because I heard they added shit that don't necessarily coincide. It with, doesn't, but it makes it even better. Yeah. And it makes For the, purpose of the relationship even better. Like, And dude, the thing about the movie that's so cool is that it's like it's art in the way that whatever your issue is, you see reflected in the movie. So if you're like an anti-gun person, you're like, see, this is the reason why we need gun laws. Mm. If you're like an anti, you know, like a homegrown terrorism or whatever that shit is, you're like, see, this is the reason why, you know, white people are the, the biggest terrorists and you need to watch them out. And if you're a mental health person, you look and you're like, see, this is why we need to look at mental health. I would think that, I mean, it, it sounds like it's an uh, anti-bullying movie because you'd watch this movie and be like, man, I need to stop fucking with these people. I need Don't to stop fuck with crazy people. people. 
But you don't know who's crazy until you, you, you fucking That's true. fuck with them. You walk out of that movie theater like, I'm going to be nice to people today, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to yeah, be nice yeah, to people yeah, yeah. today. But as I'm you a... should, though, like that's the whole thing about kindness, right? Kindness is treat everybody kindly because you never know what people are going through. You never know what people are dealing with. But what's the barrier to that, though? What do you mean? Like, if we, like we, we talk shit and we make fun of the homies. Yeah. Like, I talk shit to all my homies. Like, is there a barrier? Like, do you have to, but like... you know if they're mentally or not, ill or not. Like, you're so not going to talk shit to that crazy to dude. talk shit to people who are but mentally... But you don't know. That's, what I, that's my point, though. Mentally so, ill like, people what if don't I don't need know, a reason. What if Schultz is mentally, like, unstable and we don't know? You get what I'm saying? But he's yeah. a homie and we just we just kill each other on, on, you know what I'm saying, in the text. Yeah. Like, how are you supposed to know? You don't. You don't. And it could happen. It that's could, my point, though. Like, jump up how the fuck you. do you regulate that? I told our cameraman today, cameraman at Revolt, his name's Steven. I call him Steven the White Demon. You know, he goes through a lot of shit. Like, yeah, bad relationships with women, whatever, whatever. And he he comes in there spazzing a lot. And so he was standing right behind me today at the camera. And I'm like, yo, bro, I don't like you standing behind me. I don't trust you. You might be a domestic terrorist. And he goes, Charlamagne, you know me. And I go, and that's exactly why mm. I don't fucking trust you. Because I know you. I watch you every day. <laughs> go stand over there. I'm, 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 I can't keep my eyes on you when you're behind me like this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Had a white cameraman yeah, swing on me before. Up. Shout out to Greg. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Schultz. <laughs> what were you saying? The, what, what were you saying? But the Joker bro. was good, though. Son, the Joker was un. Believe I gotta go see it. Is it part of a bigger universe? You seen it? Eh? Nah. No, I haven't seen it, but okay. I, 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 you know, I'll dive into the little breakdowns and shit. Supposedly, they're making standalone films because they aren't that successful at making the universe films. They suck. Yeah, they, 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 they ruined the whole sucks. shit for me. Their universe. I know, you know what universe. though? The Nolan brothers, uh, the trilogy for Batman, Christopher Nolan, Jonathan Nolan. That yeah. shit was fire. Like yeah. I have to give them to them. The ba I, ba I didn't fuck with Batman Begins, and I fuck with the Dark Knight and Dark Knight Rises. I like that those iterations. That trilogy was dope. That trilogy was dope. Unbelievable. Every everything else is trash. But that's it. because it's about Christopher Nolan, Jonathan Nolan. Anything they touch is fucking gold. Whereas everybody else who's fucked with DC, you're not exactly sure. This guy who made this movie, what's the guy's name? Todd Phillips. I have no. This idea. guy is a fucking artist, man. Like, so this one is 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 worth it, dude. It's so good, man, and. I, I'm sitting there watching this movie and I'm like, why are we so drawn to the Joker? There's all these characters. There's all these villains. There's all these heroes. He's top He's top five villain of all time in any genre of comic. Would he be top five comic book character of all time? Hmm. How can a I villain... So. So, I think I, so, because I, I would put... I would put Batman in top five comic comic book characters of all time, and you really like. There's, there's really no, no other Batman villain without without Joker. There's no I other mean, villain yeah. in Batman that even comes close. Comes close. Penguin, to Joker. Freeze, nah. fuck out of here. Mm -mm. Riddler, none of them. I'm thinking, why the fuck are we so compelled with Joker? That's interesting. Like we keep on making this character over and over again, Joker. Right? We keep on coming back to it, and then I start to realize we relate way more to the Joker than we do Batman. I'm not a billionaire. I'm not a martial artist. I don't have crazy technology and a butler and all suspendable income. In, you know, in humor. Who the fuck want to be around a rich motherfucker that don't laugh? Don't laugh not even <laughs> once. Nigga don't want to laugh. Joker want to mm -hmm. laugh. You want to have a drink. You getting some pussy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You might kill a couple people in, in, in between time, but he's cool. But he's, he's cool. Yes. Listen, he's listen. Who who hasn't felt lonely a little bit? Who hasn't felt... Who's lonelier than Batman? <laughs> Son. you lucky Batman ain't the one out here. Real talk? People. Why isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> he got both of his parents killed right in front of him. You know why? No mental health relapse besides a low voice. You know why? <laughs> why? Because Alfred makes sure every day is National Steak and Blowjob. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then once he got Robin in the fold, Robin made sure every day was Yo, National Steak and Blowjob Day. Holy shit. fact, they did it together. Alfred like, look, I'm going to cook the steak. You give the blowjob. <laughs> <laughs> is Alfred the first like Jeffrey Epstein? Oh shit! Yo, the, the Bat Cave, bro. The Bat Cave was really the Boy Cave, dude. It was going down, dude. Holy shit! Nobody cared about the relationship between Robin and Batman. You realize no. in the movies they don't explore that relationship Not ever at all because it looks too weird now. In 2019, 2020, you would wonder why this motherfucker running around with this little boy. Who is this little boy's parents? Was we he know a teenager when he first got with him? Yes. How old was he about? I don't know how old Robin's supposed to be, but his name is The Boy Wonder. Coming to the stage, The Boy Wonder. What the fuck? Oh, I never thought about it like that. Yes. <laughs> you, know what, you know what his real name was, right? What? 
Dick Grayson. That's his name. That's his government name. That, that is oh, Robin's his real name is name. Dick? Yeah, like how Batman is Bruce Wayne? His real name is Dick, Dick Grayson. Grayson. Dick Grayson, yeah. And he's white. <laughs> what does that have to do with it? <laughs> oh, Littler. Oh! <laughs> So Dick Raisin. <laughs> no, our di our dicks are regular. No. Asian is littler. No. Okay. You guys are allegedly bigger. <laughs> allegedly, which we allegedly, don't even I know, don't know is if true. That's true or not. It's a, it's actually I'm yeah, seven and three fourths eight when it's warm out. <laughs> my dick looks like me, bro. Right. <laughs> how does it how does it look? It looks like me. Like my shape, look? like my, 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 yeah, yeah. my like the way you I'm two colors size. on that shit. <laughs> I'm not, yeah, I'm not like, I'm, yeah. I'm not like. Color man's like, dick look like them pigs in the Bahamas so that do all yeah, yeah. out. So like, I'm not your sure. skin is amazing. I don't have four skin. <laughs> Natasha Sandy cut that shit off. The head, the head do look good when it's shiny. You know what I'm saying? But it's like, my dick looks like me. I can't, it, it looks like me. It it looks built, like my you. dick is built like It's you. built like you. Yeah. I basically okay. exfoliated. Yeah, it might yeah. intimidate you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Low center of gravity. Yeah, depending sturdy. on what you've seen before. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it might intimidate you. I don't know. It comes at the wrong time. Yeah, oh, all the time. Wow. <laughs> all the time. What? All the all motherfuckers. It's very selfish. Right when you're about to get yours. As soon as you say, I'm coming. Oh, I'm, that's it. <laughs> Soon, soon as you say I'm about to come, nope, I'm sorry. I beat Either you to we it. coming or I'm coming. I'll beat, beat you to it. <laughs> Better hurry it up, babe. <laughs> it's, it's either me or we. He was, having this, he was having this conversation about like, um, you know, guys, when you're, when you, I guess when you got a little bit of money, yeah, uh, your dick is lazy. Is that I true? don't know nothing about that. Well, I ain't got no money yet. I think Dick, <laughs> Dick has gotten way better for women as they've made money. Because there was a time where you didn't make, women didn't make any money. They literally needed us to take them out of their parents' house mm -hmm. and then give them a new house where they could have a life and children. So at that point in time, we weren't even thinking about your orgasm because we had already done so much for you. We had improved <laughs> your life so much. So it was like the fact that we would have to make all the money bring home all the, you know, do all that kind of keep you safe, have the, the house, have all those things and make your orgasm was at least, it was excessive. Now that you can, <laughs> it was excessive. You shouldn't have asked for it. But now that you have your own money, you have your own home, you have everything. We need to go down on you. We need to please you. We need to make you orgasm. I like, I like making my woman orgasm just because I feel like that's, my job. When we say, you know, when men say our job is to protect and provide, yeah. that's part of provision. You know what I'm saying? I want to make you get to that orgasm. I want to make you nut. I would I would not say it's part of provision. I would say it's like the extra channels in the cable package. You know, like... Nah, the, right, nah, bro. the basic cable orgasm basic, bro. No, the orgasm is not nah, basic. Orgasm NBC, ABC, CBS, Fox, bro. Son, yeah, the, you man. saying the orgasm comes with an antenna that goes up like yes. that? Yes. No. It should. Why no, not? orgasm is, the, say what? Why not? Because it takes more from me to make her orgasm than it takes from her to make me orgasm. That's because we built different. Well, exactly. Coast. It ain't our fault that you can fucking snap your fingers like Thanos and our nut vanishes. Bro. They don't vanish. Shit. It appears. Yeah, it definitely appears. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely appears. <laughs> that shit come. Listen, it don't, it don't take nothing from me. You got it still? <laughs> Nothing. Nothing but, at all. By the way, that's one of my greatest mental exercises. Is coming. Not, no, holding that shit. Oh, holding it back Not in. Nothing. Not nothing. Not nothing. And what do you think about to hold it back in? Everything. I do my ABCs. You know what I'm saying? I think about like... You mean you, you do your ABCs? I do. I start, you go, I go, let's go A, B, C, D, E, F, G. I start counting my, my strokes. Uh -huh. I don't know why I start counting them one, two, three. It's just it's like it's kind of like holding your breath. You see how, yeah, much, yeah. how long I can hold my breath underwater? Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? What else? What else do I think? Standing up, definitely. When I, if I stand up, if I'm laying, if I'm doing missionary, it's over. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're doing the pumping. Yeah. But what if you let her get on top? Oh, I'm done. Well, she finishes all quick fast. Damn. Really? Quick That's fast. where I can control the no, best. No, 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 no. Quick yeah, fast. Me too. Yeah? yeah? Quick fast. If she's on top. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, I'm no, not controlling. Because no, no. I just start looking at shit. Exactly. Just... Yup. No, you can't do but you look stupid. I Whatever. Don't I don't care. I, don't I, don't care. I, don't I already look stupid. I'm going like this. You and you like, <laughs> no, no, it's yeah. dark. I'm going to get away with that. Listen, you married, I have sex in the dark. Yeah, that's yeah, right. that's true. She Would don't you, know what you're looking at. Anybody? 
No, I'm not scared of my body. It's scared of hers. In the middle of the night. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, He's single. We met in the club. <laughs> you hit it from the back. That's when you can really look at the walls and shit, and she don't know what's going on back there, and you can son. put in that work. I had son. a That's booger a wall when I lived with my parents, and I bring girls. I'd have a booger wall. I just like wipe boogers That's on the fucking thing. What? Oh, you know what's really gross? That's some sometimes. White shit. Oh yeah, of course. But sometimes <laughs> <laughs> it is some white people shit to have your own room. Yeah. No. <laughs> to wipe boogers on your fucking wall. So, but I would have the and I just stare at my booger wall, and that's how I would try, try to not know. So boogers kept you from nothing. Yeah, bro. Yeah, man. Did you now keep it real? You yep. ever eat one of them? Mother? Never ate, but I'd be like rub them like braille. <laughs> that is gross. It is fuck. My God, that what is fucking disgusting. Wrong with you? Everything. Ass, shit, everything. Why do you think I like the Joker so much? Oh my God. <laughs> so what you saying is we shouldn't make fun of you again? Don't do it, <laughs> Taylor. What? We Taylor? Only talking about men shit. Taylor, what you talking about? Orgasming over there or other yeah, shit that doesn't exist? No, shut up. Yeah. We were talking about <laughs> masturbation yeah. earlier. Yes. And who was talking about masturbation earlier? Well, I was talking about masturbation. <laughs> With who? Nobody. This is what she does, bro. She just be saying shit by herself. <laughs> she finished that whole sentence to me by herself and thought that like That's I was involved. True. Yes, it you is. You just said we were talking about masturbation earlier. Nobody was talking about masturbation. No, on some real shit, my big homie told me that. He said women start conversation and finish it talking to you. But, yo. Hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, yeah. How many times a girl just says, So Megan said it's a hot girl song. It's Megan. It's Christmas. I don't know who this shit is. What the fuck? What are we talking about right now? So anyway, you were masturbating. Go. Okay. Um, That's where you lost that nail. About masturbation with my fellow friends, okay, and coworkers. Yeah. And That's an HR violation right there for sure. So yeah, nobody want to come to work here about actually, that shit. She doesn't masturbate. Do come you guys in. think it's weird? Like you being in a relationship, do you think it's weird that you're? She's putting you on blast masturbate? right now, Jazz. Jazz is a child. Do I think it's weird She's that what? Well, hold on. How old is Jazz before we have this is conversation? Twenty nine. April, so I'm really not a child. No, she's not that a child true. at all. You your fingers should be worn out by now. Yeah. Do I think it's weird? They look like you've been in a if bath. You're in a relationship, do you think it's weird if your girl masturbates? No. Okay. That's less work for me. Yeah. No, I don't think it's weird. I just don't masturbate at all. Why? I, have. I think you never have. No. I don't trust people like that. <laughs> Why? What the hell? That's, that's some bullshit. What? How, yeah. How, how can a man know how to make you come if you don't know how to make yourself exactly. come? Exactly. Oh, that's a great question. Um. I don't know. I, I just honestly, every time that I tried to do something like that, it made me feel like, damn, I can't get dick. And I just well, got, I turned myself off. I didn't know what I was doing. But you know you can get dick. You just walk outside. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like that the first time I jacked off. What? The first time I felt I jacked off, I felt like a total loser. Like That's I really thought, I, I thought jacking off was some shit did that you, you did when first you couldn't time? get pussy. Nah, I came like the second or third time because I felt so depressed when I'd be jacking off and I just, just stop. stop. I, yeah, dude, that's I, how the, I feel. I feel depressed almost. Like, what's going on with me? Like, why can't I get? Do you it? watch videos or something? Nah, that's me. what I was telling them too. I find porn to be hilarious to me, and then okay. when I also watch, look at porn, it just it makes me ask myself. I can't believe these girls are really taping themselves getting fucked. Yeah. So I go into a different space when I. I see guarantee porn. you work with somebody that's done that. Done what? Porn? No, tape themselves. Of course, probably. Women do that. That's they take pictures saying. of themselves. Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm saying. Take pictures so of them naked that... in the mirror. That's soft porn. Because I think it's like set up. I don't feel like it's natural. It's not like natural. That's what we love. <laughs> yeah. We don't want it to be natural. It's I not like natural the... that six guys is jerking off on a girl. I'm right. Like, yeah, that's unnatural. I love reality natural. show porn. Bang Bros. Oh, when they used dude. to ride around in the white they van and up... just see girls driving down the street. I almost dropped out of college because I watched that. Oh, you know those my you know those I my guys, right? Dro you know them? I know them. They, <laughs> they listen to the Breakfast Club religiously. Son, we have to get them on Brilliant Idiots. I would be a dream. I literally was in college freshman year. I found this Bang Bros and I'm paying 30 thousand dollars a year for college and these guys are driving around in a van just fucking yes. random hot chicks and i'm like i might buy a van and we and yo the illest part about it is we didn't know if it was real number one right yeah. we didn't know if it was real number two we thought the white vans were restricted just to pedophiles which they debunked that fucking stereotype yep. and number three first show i ever binge watched oh before, yeah before there was a netflix it was Bang Bros call, all day, bro. every day. Yes, yes. Amazing. You know how I knew it was set up? Oh. That guy's cock was too big to fit in an average woman. The guy's cock that would fuck the girls, he had a mallet. What? I always wonder if, like, if guys like compare their cocks to them. I, nobody said compare. I do. You said we watch. Yeah. 
And I don't like too big dick porn. <laughs> I got, I got, I just got, say it's an extension. I don't, but yeah, but like, I don't just don't even like it. Like there's a guy that I watch. He does backroom casting couch and his name is Rick. Okay. And he's, his dick's actually almost too small because I don't believe the girl sounds that come from it. Right. But like I, his dick is like, you feel amazing when you're watching his dick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. You're not at all embarrassed about what it is. You're like, I'm incredible. It's like your dick looks like his filtered. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what you're thinking about when you're watching this shit? <laughs> Some of it. I kind of, I mean, I'm crazy. Like, I, I jerk off to, like, the negotiation. Like, when, oh, when like, shit, they're not crazy. even fucking yet, but he's like, well, you know, you can make $5,000 a day. I'm like, oh, yeah, you can make $5,000 a day. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> She's crazy. gonna fall for it, Rick. She's say, gonna fall for it. I just say it's an extension. <laughs> if I see a dick that's bigger than mine, I'm like, oh, that shit ain't real. Ejection. Oh, so you think it's fake? I mean, I don't know if it is or not, but that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not not. I just like that shit ain't real. Um, hey, the homie said women think they cute till you wipe the back of their neck with an alcohol swab. Oh shit! <laughs> Dirty <laughs> ass neck. <laughs> Dirty ass fucking neck. That Wait, shit don't humble the shit out. That shit don't humble you real fast because you can just. Same. Right, go get a wet wipe then. Let's do a little touch. <laughs> go get a wet wipe. Let's see who got the dirtiest fucking neck in here. I'll be back. Bring some wet wipe. No, in no, here. no. But someone follow her because she's gonna wash her neck. She's gonna wash. That's her neck. right. Oh! <laughs> Yes, you know what the wet wipe guy is slick. We're gonna do the wet. We're gonna do the wet wipe challenge, nigga. Jazz gonna go get that thing, nigga. We're gonna do the wet wipe challenge, goddammit. Yo, the wet wipe challenge. Do the wet wipe challenge. Dude, we're gonna break up some couples. That's right. Wet wipe challenge. You and your girl wipe that neck. Here we go. You could just get out the shower. Oh shit! Right on demand. Okay. Hold up. Let's pay. Let's pay some bills. And we're going to come back and we're going to do the wet wipe challenge. Okay. <laughs> Let's pay some bills. Let's do okay. Hey, guys. You know that uh, that sting you feel every time you pay an overdraft fee? Let me pour some salt in the wound. Big thanks to $33 billion of the overdraft fees they charge us each year. That's what the Dave app is here to stop. Dave is the number one budgeting app in America because it saves you. From overdraft fees, tells you about upcoming bills, and can advance you $75 from your next paycheck with no credit, check at all, no interest, nothing, all right? Get the Dave app, and for just $1 per month, that's $12 a year, which is way less than any overdraft fee, and you'll have to pay, you'll never have to pay an overdraft fee again. Dave will help you budget for upcoming expenses, text you if you're spending too much, and if you need cash fast. In advance, up to $75 is there in just 90 seconds. Mark Cuban is an investor in Dave because he got crushed by overdraft fees in his 20s and wants you to never pay an overdraft fee again. Three million people already use Dave to set up $1,000 a year in overdraft fees. That's why it's the number one budgeting app in the app store. Go to dave.com slash idiots. It really helps the show if you let them know that you heard it here. Okay, so you download Dave and then never pay another overdraft fee again. It's immediate savings. Go now. Dave.com slash idiots. $12 a year. Never pay an overdraft fee again. Seems like a pretty good deal. You like it? D-A-V-E dot com slash idiots. Back to the show. All, All right. right. Wet wipe challenge, baby. Wet okay. wipe challenge. Now. Let's see. Let's tell she you how. Let's tell you what she happened. Went and sat off in the corner. Hey, say I, what you said earlier. I said the big homie told me uh, girls think that they're cute till you wipe the back of their neck with an alcohol swab. And Taylor does what she always does: jumps in the conversation. She has no business jumping in. And she said, "What about guys? Y'all too?" As if she knows anything about this. So we're going to do the wet wipe challenge. I have a wet wipe here. We're going to start with Taylor. Wet wipe. Come on over here. Taylor. Make sure you get that good swab. Okay. Oh, let me show you the part you get. I hate you. Show you the Whoa, right there. There you go. There you go. Ooh, there you go. Why are you going so hard? Let me see what you got. Ha! Hold on. No, 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 no. I take a shower in the morning all the time. Nah, nah, you still got. You or no? Give me it. It's not alcohol wipe. That's what it is. That alcohol pull that dirt off. Oh, this is clean. Oh no, this is just a regular. We need the alcohol wipe, but I know it's some dirt back there because I saw it. What do I? Yo, she still got a little dirt. I'm not gonna lie, it's a little tan. You think we got some alcohol wipe? Mama definitely got some alcohol wipe. Oh, we're gonna get some dirt. Let me see the other side. Brandon, come here. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. He said, "I'm good." 
good. Brandon, I'm you good. can't let all the Africans down right now, Brandon. We all good. You out here reinforcing we stereotypes. Good here, bro. Africa's a beautiful place. It is beautiful. Okay then. I'm gonna let them down right now. I'm gonna <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, what were you gonna? Hold on, hold on. What were you gonna yeah, ask him to do? We all good over yeah. here. What were you gonna ask him to do? Wipe that neck. We gotta get alcohol. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> my shit clean. I, I wash twice a day. God damn it. He said he got eczema. Don't blame it on the eczema. That skin pulling right up, huh? <laughs> Listen, man, what what were you doing drinking fucking beer out of a shoe, bro? Oh, dude, I was in Australia, man. The fuck was that about? It's called a shoey. It's what they do. It's like part of their celebration. You pour beer into a shoe, and then uh -huh. you chug that shit. And um, I was out there doing shows, and uh, there's this guy named Frenchie who's kind of popularized it out there. And uh, Whose shoe? Some guy in the audience. No, a so, random guy? Yeah, I didn't, it wasn't my shoe. Oh, but the, the, the smart thing is... Why? Is, well, because if you do your own shoe, you got to walk around the rest of the night with a soaking wet shoe. Gotcha. But if you do someone else's shoe, you run the risk of you know getting like staph infection or something crazy like yeah, that. Yeah, but yeah. if you don't, then you have a dry shoe and you just did the shoey. Is it safe Lies. to say that white people have so much privilege? Yeah, that's Australia though. <laughs> they white, they white bro. They white people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, white yeah, people yeah, yeah. that Dude. they just make up shit to do. Son, we are the shit, bro. <laughs> Yo, white people are the shit. When you think about it, think about all this cool shit we just make up, bro. <laughs> what is, what We're is, bored. What is it? You like drinking? Drink Drink out your shoe. What does it symbolize? It's just not giving a fuck, fun, joy, we'll do whatever. <laughs> a lot of the stuff we just do to troll black people. West Coast. I just want to know why. Yeah, if you're doing it to troll black people, you do it out of a Jordan. All right? <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> that, be Even we don't want to waste the Jordan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but yeah. no, we don't do it to troll, troll black people because there's no black people in Australia. But uh, it's more just like... I don't know. We just like having fun with shit, man. We just like having a good time and doing absurd, stupid shit. And there's no Probably purpose Probably skydive, bungee jump, all this kind but of I stuff. I know why people do that. That's thrill-seeking. Yeah, like, this is thrill-seeking, too. I guess. It's, that's a thrill. So Like we, doing a keg stand. There's no, like, thrill with that, but it's just funny. But at least you get drunk. Exactly. I guess, okay. So you're going to be able to get drunk. When you drank the beer out of the shoe, yes. right? Like, did you, like, yo, man, let me get your, let me get your team. Like, yes. So here's the thing about white people. For, like... <laughs> For like thousands of years, we've like, ah, oh, uh, here we go. Should wait, we get wait, back finish, to it? Finish your so point. for thousands of years, like we were trying to be like cool, or our version of cool. It's not what cool is today, but like back in the day, like being refined and exquisite was cool, right? So now we're coming on the other end of that where you like reject all things cool. So drinking beer out of a shoe isn't a refined, uh, expensive, rich thing to do. It's yeah. the exact opposite. I'm yeah, drinking out of the dirtiest thing ever. Shit. Exactly. Look at hipsters. Bullshit. It's like, I'm going to reject all the wealthy things and look like I'm a homeless person. Right. So that's, I think, where our culture is kind of shifting. We're like doing everything that pushes away the idea of being hoity-toity and fancy. That's, that's, I don't know. Bro. Don't worry. Y'all are going to get there one day. No, we're not. No, you got you, once you get you got to get so much money that you start thinking money's not cool, and that's where white people are. We've been rich for oh. so long that we're like, "Yo, being poor is kind of cool, huh? Let's try that. Oh, I mean, yeah. Let's do what those let's, white guys let's do. Let's trade places. Yeah. I got a couple of neighborhoods to visit. You know yeah, but don't that, worry, we'll be there. That's not, that's, not all white, that's not all white people though. Nah, listen, there are definitely the elite whites that want to hold on to that. Yeah, I mean, you got the one percent, but then you got a lot of poor white people. There's a lot of poor white people. Lot, I mean, a lot of poor white people. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so and and they've kind of embraced the poverty too. It's kind of cool to see. I mean, they you, love it. You go downtown. That's what, that's what the whole trailer park vibe was. Hell you know what I'm saying? I saw you in the thing with the. They even had their own haircut, the mullet. With the, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Can afford, can afford just enough to cut just a, just a, just enough off. That's how poor you are? Only the front? That, only the front. That's it. <laughs> Gotta let that shit grow out in the back. Yeah. <laughs> the fucking shag look. They say business in the front, party in the back. I think that's the. Uh... Nobody wants to party with anybody with a mullet. What, about, what about your cousins? You fuck them. Yeah. And, um, and amongst that community. That's what we call. Yeah, 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 That's yeah. what we call a party. Show. Mullet mashing. Oh, yeah. That's what they call it. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Uh-huh. And what you, what you were saying, Ed? No, I was about to ask some some, some shit about white people fighting kangaroos. I oh, saw, yeah. I, I think saw. they did that. I don't know. But they were really friendly when we went there. Go get that neck wipe, Taylor. Now, what, <laughs> what's the name of those wipes we got? We have... These are some bar wipes. Smoky Bones alcohol <laughs> wipes. <laughs> Okay, get that next one. Barn hair up, and fire grill. So get the, get the middle of that nape. Fresh nap. <laughs> Top, moist towelette. Hey, you might have cleaned it already. I think I did, yo. Okay, all right. Stop! Let's see how I wear it. Get right here. I got it, I got it. There you go. There you go. It's not fair. I can't reach it. Ooh, that's a good swab there, Shorty.
<laughs> She's fucking said, clean, said, bro. Said, okay, we'll do it like this. Go in another room and do it under your breast and do it and come back. <laughs> I bet you that shit dirty as fuck. <laughs> I bet under that breath, dirty is shit. Yeah, yeah, Come Charlotte, on, get on. one. Yeah. Mine's not dirty. Rub his head. Let me do it. Hey, y'all niggas washing y'all necks and shit? <laughs> I wash my shit too, but damn. I thought we'd get some dirty necks in this motherfucker, man. Yeah, her shit is spotless. Thank you. For real? Because you know. <laughs> I feel All like right. Taylor wiping it on the black hoodie on purpose. Damn, how the Let's fuck? Let's see the white man now. <laughs> hey, it'd be fucked up with his shit black. <laughs> <laughs> dirty, dirty. Now, you gotta do Schultz's legs. You know, white people don't wash their legs. <laughs> we <laughs> don't. Hey, is that real, right? <laughs> we, no, we Why don't. don't wash our legs? Because we don't need to. Yes, you do. Let white people, white people don't wash our legs. <laughs> we don't wash below the dick. Let's hey, do do, the, do the neck first, then do the ankle. Let's see. Also, yeah, we don't use a little towel. You don't use a towel. No, nah, hell no. Just for your what? hands. Just for our hands. For what? It's so That's crazy. You get in there better with the nails. Damn. I'm nice. Right, oh, let's do them ankles, though. <laughs> <laughs> put, your, put your shit right up here, show. Hold on. Ooh, wet wipe hold challenge, on. baby. Get that shit. Get that you shit. You had it right down like that? The ankle, you know what the ankle is, Taylor? No, but he put all his... You, oh, listen, the ankles don't matter. We don't get ashy like you guys, bro. <laughs> 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 You're going for the ankle? <laughs> Damn, niggas it's is clean. No, we're guys, we're in the first world here, okay? The dirtiest so far was definitely you. Niggas the first one. Well. Niggas is clean. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What? 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 I missed it. <laughs> what? I said niggas is clean. Said, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I said it. <laughs> I can't agree with everything. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do we think of Bernie Sanders having a heart attack, bro? Bro, that shit is amazing marketing. <laughs> What do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? He's really man? trying that healthcare shit out, bro. He's, he's about his his policies, be like that motherfucker. I'm show you my shit work. Real talk, real talk. I think bro. Bernie got to tap out, bro. Huh? He got to tap out. He did. He's gone. Nah, I think he really need to tap out. I think it's time he need to pull the plug, man. It's a shame, yo. That's but, that's bad terminology. What? Oh, oh yeah, you're right. <laughs> oh, yeah, I didn't mean it like Too that. Too soon. It's sad because he's the only one that really cares, man. He's really the nah, only one that so. cares. Who I else think cares? Who else cares? Elizabeth Warren cares. I think Mayor Pete you're cares. You're a fucking liar, bro. Think, you can't be a sociopath. Maybe Mayor Pete. I'm going to tell you, hey, by the way, yeah. even though people do politics, and I never thought about this until this weekend, and no, I have. I think the Clintons actually did care, bro. Ooh, talk to me. Reason I think the Clintons actually did care. I mean, I know people talk about the '94 crime bill, which Bill Clinton implemented, Joe Biden wrote, but Bill Clinton pushed it through. But the reason they did that was on, on the behest of, of a lot of the Black know, Caucus, black, the Black Caucus, John Lewis. A, lot of, a lot of black people in the churches, stuff like that. I was at Tyler Perry's um, grand opening for his studio this week. Mm. Um, I think it was only like 300 people invited with plus ones, or like 400 people. Somebody been like 800 people there, something like that. And you know, up up until it was time to go, like for at least a month or so, they were saying, hey, you got to be there at five o'clock for Secret Service check-in. Now, everybody like, oh shit, Secret Service. Oh, Brock must be coming. Oh, Michelle. Like, you know, you just think, I'm not thinking anything. I'm like, oh shit, bro, you know, it got to be the Obamas. got to be the Obamas. But it was the Clintons. Yeah. It was Bill and Hillary. That's crazy. And I'm sitting there like, I've never kicked it with them outside of like, you know, I've never met Bill at all, but I've never kicked it with Hillary outside of doing interviews. Yeah. Things like that. But, you know, we just, we was, Talking, casual conversation about shit. You were just talking to Bill Clinton. <laughs> oh, oh, Bill. First of all, I bet you she didn't bring hot sauce was, to this event. Shit like it was normal. First of all, <laughs> yeah. first of all, Bakari, uh, Bakari introduced me to Bill. I'm like, Bill, what's happening? You know what I'm saying? Introduced my wife. Bill's, you know, he's tall. He's looking down at my wife. He's shaking the hand. You know what I mean? Charming. Handshake lasted a little too long for my oh. liking. You know what I'm saying? I'm working on myself in therapy. Well, Bill's a ladies man. Then oh. security still there. Charming. So I say. <laughs> You know, I'm, on, I'm, I'm on that tequila. I'm on yeah, that goddamn. Yeah. Put it like this: I'm so drunk that I'm calling it 1492 <laughs> instead of 1942. All right. Oh, it I was, didn't know what it was. Yeah, it's 1942. <laughs> it was one part in the party. Yeah. I said, "Come on, Tim, let's go get some 1492." And Tip was like, "You gonna drink the uh, the blue water that Columbus sailed on?" Oh, yeah. I'm like, I'm like yeah, no. Tip. <laughs> Quick response. Quick response. Right? Yeah. So I'm like, I'm, I go, Bill, you shaking my wife's hand a little too long. You said that? You goddamn right. <laughs> Bill goes, Bill goes, 
Charlemagne, he would want me to talk to her for an hour. Because at this stage of my life, I'm just old and harmless. <laughs> Do you like that? No, he didn't. Yes, he did. Oh, Bill's a player. Oh, player, player. <laughs> that's player, crazy. player. But if I'm a player, player, I'm like, but I fuck with that though. That's just that's some cool shit. Like you know, we going back and forth. That's, but I'm saying all that to say he crazy. was on Epstein's island. I don't know. No, I'm saying all that to say he had no reason to be at Tyler Perry's island. They're not running for anything. You know what I'm saying? He had no reason to be there other than he wanted to be there to support. His guy, Tyler. You understand what I'm saying? You know, people say, oh, you're pandering, you're pandering, you're pandering. There was no presidential candidates there. Interesting. But Hillary and Bill was there, and they was at the church the next day, cooling, having a good time. That's hmm. crazy. Minding their business. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. It wasn't like, like PR and like... No! You couldn't even take no pictures. I mean, you could take pictures. People taking pictures with them. You saw Bow Wow take a picture with Bill. But you could, but I mean, it's like, <laughs> it wasn't that type of scene. They was just, they was just there in support of Tyler Perry. They didn't have to be there. That's crazy. That's what I, I thought that was dope. That, that's To me, that that said a lot. If it, if Hillary was running or something, I'd be like, all right. So then that, but, panda, then, panda. But, then, but then it would be a victim of circumstance because they could still have good intentions. That's a fact. You know what I'm saying? That's but, a fact. But I'm just saying all that to say, I actually think that they did care. I just think sometimes people get caught up in the business of politics. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes when you're passing certain legislations, they may benefit you know, one community and they may hurt another community, but you got to look at what people have done as a whole. You yes. know what I'm saying? Look at look, look at what people have done as a whole for certain demos and certain demographics. You know what I'm saying? And I'm, I'm not vouching for them in no way, shape or form because I really don't know everything they've done in totality. You know what I'm saying? I, yeah. I know he was on Arsenio playing the sax. I know black people seem to love Bill for whatever reason, you know, but to see him there at that event and, he was just there just to kick it. And because he support Tyler, I thought that shit was dope. He's an ally. That says a lot. I've always fucked with Bill. I grew up in a, you know, a Clinton Democrat household and Bill was the man. I always thought he was the coolest. Hillary's useless, but Bill, I think, I think that he's the now, fucking man. Let me man. ask you this. Yeah. When you, when you say that about somebody's wife, like, what's the protocol for that? Like, because she's in the public eye, she's a politician. Right. Like, what? how is that? How are I you mean, supposed to have? He's harmless, you know? Hillary is a is 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 great one on one. Mm -hmm. Like if you sitting around having a convo with Hillary, kicking it, she's good one on one. It's when she got to she don't. It's when she got to get in front of a, a mass audience. Not everybody got it. Not everybody got it. Bill man. got Bill it. Got it. He saw Bill on Arsenio. Move, with the shake, the, hit it. The shades, you know what I mean? Wasn't Trash trying sex. too hard. Yeah, Bill got it. Bill is Southern swag. That's it. Bill got it. Did you see him smoke weed? No, nah, I never seen him smoke weed. Hmm. I never saw him smoke How weed. How was Tyler Perry's thing? What was it? He was opening his new studio? What was this? Well, the studio been open for a few years. Uh, right. But Tyler is one of these people who really doesn't fit into this era because he's not one of these people that walk in buildings and just because you're in the building, you take a, a picture in front of the sign. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like people like to announce all their moves before they're even fucking made. Yo, they'll announce an audition. Yeah, audition. I'm here at NBC here. Like, man, with a thousand up. other people that look oh, like you, idiot. I can't stand yeah. that shit. It's like, yo, yeah. he's one of those people that he's he's just, he's built, he built his, he built his studio. Black Panther shot in there. Some of some Black Panther was shot in there. Some of Endgame was shot in there. Walking Dead shoots there. Yeah. The Wild and Out shoots there. He, mad shit is already in there. Moving. He been doing it for a few years. He just decided to have the grand opening now because now you know right. now they're opening it up to tours and stuff like that. But it's like he 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 built in silence, did the work. Now I want to show it to people. I love you know it. You know what I'm saying? I admire it. He That's is, all it is. Teach teach the Tyler Perry story in school. You want you're we're talking about like positive black figures. You want to talk about to put their money where their mouth is and go out there and get it. And the there fact it that is he right gave there. Spike Lee a soundstage, even though Spike Lee has. You know, called him a, a coon and an Uncle Tom. That's the Said his work flex. was setting back. That is. Setting, people, setting black people back. That's the ultimate flex. I haven't got to that point in my life. <laughs> you will. That's Jason and Nas. I, no, That's the I, daddy move right I, there. It's like, I'm going a, I'm to a name a studio after you because you know what? You'll never have a studio. You're not You're there yet. A soundstage. <laughs> or a nah, soundstage. I'm you, not at that point in my life yeah. when it comes to forgiveness, bro. What's this, What soundstage? What do they do in the soundstage? Is there like a specific thing that's shot there? I'm not sure. That could be kind of funny. What if they house like the porta potties? <laughs> right? <laughs> what if, <yeah. laughs> Bro, this is the most immaculate studio I've ever seen in my life. Beautiful. That's crazy. 332 yeah. square feet. Biggest studio. You can put Fox in there, Paramount, uh, 
Sony, I think they said. It, it's got to be more than 332 square feet. 332? 332. No, 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 no. You said 332 square feet. This room. Is acres. Is, no, you no, said you, square feet. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah 332 acres. acres. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. 332 acres. 332 yeah, acres. Yeah, that's crazy. Like, that's it's, it's, and it's like, like you, know how, you know how studios be having um, the houses on them? Yeah. Like, like, like when I did the girlfriend's interview, we was on the, the house of blackish. Yeah, yeah. All the houses on Tyler's set are up to code. Meaning you could live in the you houses? You could fucking live They're in They're up them. to code. They're up to code. Oh, and what is the what is the benefit of that? What is the... <laughs> I don't fucking know. So for this? I have no idea. Just so people, for, <laughs> just so it seems like, like a waste. Bro, he's got a White House. He's got a... He's got... It's the only White House that is almost an exact replica of the actual White House. For a full scale? No, no, no. Because oh. the actual White House is like, what, 20,000 square feet or some shit it's, like that? It's not even that popping, the actual White House. Like it's, it's, yeah, yeah. it's twenty thousand square feet. I'm sure. Okay, but it, this it's, this one is only like I think they said five thousand something mm. like that. Right, but it's but so, some of the rooms look like it. It's it's, it's, it's the whole the, thing. Yeah. They said it's the only actual replica of the White House. Yeah, the closest you'll get on any. Yo, and he's movie smart like. because think about how many movies, documentaries, yes, TV shows are going to be shot specifically about the Trump administration. Bruh. So he got that set up. Oh real man, quick. yeah. The dude yeah, got a yeah. fashion boutique on the lot. He's opening up a a center for LGBT homeless youth that have nowhere to go. That's not like the shit is. Well, I mean, it's immaculate, bro. Like, Damn, I need some Tyler Perry money. Yeah, you know how you get Tyler Perry money? Uh, catering to your core. Tyler Perry has done everything that people tell people not to do, especially black people. Mm -hmm. He has done nothing but black art. That's it. He's catered to this specific audience of black people. That's it. Nothing more, nothing less. And he he super prospered off it. Because that was enough for him. That was enough. So maybe people get caught in the Hollywood matrix Damn, where they're like, man, that's crazy. It, it's like they're not validated unless they do a movie with MGM or an action movie here. Absolutely. It's just like, it, just find out what you truly want to do and you enjoy doing and then do it. And it. he liked making those films. It don't matter if we like Medea or not. Motherfuckers liked it. And now he has a studio built that's off it. it. That's it. That's really, I, mean, I remember reading an article about Tyler years, years, years ago. It was in the Source magazine. He had made like $35 million dollars off of uh, off the stage plays, and he was about to do his first movie. That's what the article was actually about. The mm -hmm. fact that he's had all the success in stage plays, right. and he was putting out Diary of a Mad Black Woman. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I remember reading that thing like, damn, thirty five million dollars off stage plays. That was impressive. Hell yeah! And that's he literally did that, and then he just got into the movies, and he conquered that, and he made so much off the stage plays and the movies that, boom. Wow. Television too. Let me grab this fucking studio. Television, like, and even with the tell, even with his television deals, own BT, TBS, TBS. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Like, like stations that have these these high demographics of black people cater to your fucking core, bro. That's it. Damn. Whatever your core is, cater to that shit. Everything Honestly, else will fall the into future. place. That's the future. We're all going to be making content for our people. Our, our people aren't necessarily defined by race but they're defined by who our audience is who support us and like as the the t the abc nbc cbs like as the shows that everybody just had on their tvs are gone because those are leaving mm -hmm. now we have what's on our phone and we have so much on our phone we can just go to whatever you are going to be creating content for your core and those of us that can create it are going to succeed and those are the people that only know how to create like blanket things for everyone that not everyone really likes are going to fail. It's just what's going to happen. Yo, that's, listen, uh, yeah, you're absolutely right. I, I I will say the reason I think it's, it's cool to cater to a particular audience is because uh, I heard Tyler say in an interview with Gail King, he said that when, when you're doing this comedy for black people, it's specific. It's a language. You know what I'm saying? There's certain things that only certain audiences are going to understand. Yep. And that's fine. Yeah. Even you, you building an asshole army, it's certain thing. When you do like this, you ain't no capital. Gang. You ain't no blood. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> tight, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That means something totally That's what, But boom. <laughs> right, but, right. To, but to Schultz's audience, yeah, yeah. they know what that is. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? So it's like, yo, if you got a certain language, speak it. Yeah. 100%. That's why podcasts are so great. Like, we got, you got a Look niche audience. Look what we audience. built here. Yeah. You got a niche fucking audience. Yeah. If we could fucking get Chris to step his game up, we could make a couple. Can we have a shit on Chris? Multi million dollars. Can we have a shit on Chris <laughs> moment of the podcast? Because I go crazy on the group. Anytime Chris suggests anything, like a time to shoot or anything like that, I'm like, get a studio. Why do we move studios every single? Why are we the homeless podcast? 
Should we change the name to the Homeless Podcast? <laughs> Should we call us the Homeless Podcast? We are way too successful. We're bringing way too much money to be moving around studios every single week. We we do? We do what? <laughs> do we move around studios every single week? Were we here last week? Oh, but that's because somebody in this building, they now have that studio, right? It's theirs. I don't know who, I forgot who it is. Who is it? I don't, I don't care. Know. Is it a podcast? No. Oh, yeah, I don't know. Somebody has the studio that we used to use. I still don't know what Chris does for this podcast. Yeah. So what he could start doing is getting a motherfucking... <laughs> oh, shit. A, oh. Don't oh shit me now. <laughs> don't hack. Don't, don't oh shit me now. You out here throwing the alley-oop. <laughs> oh, shit. What else, yo? <laughs> Tell me so, how you really feel. So <laughs> what I need is a motherfucking... I say that, I've been saying this every single week for him. What, what you could start with doing is getting a motherfucking studio. Is Chris now, here? Well, Chris, of course not. Oh. And he's not looking for a studio. <laughs> we know that. He's taking trips to Taiwan. I'm gonna start invo or invoicing Chris. Oh, then we're going to get a studio. Because that's all people listen to is money, yo. I swear to God, it's all people <laughs> fucking listen. It's like, you try to be nice to someone, you try to give them opportunity, you try to motivate them, whatever. Yeah. And the second you're like, ah, I can't give you that. Or this is going to cost you, immediately they fucking on it, bro. Mm. So if you start, because you're providing the... You're providing the, what's it called? I mean, yeah, we've been coming to Premier for some years now. Here at Premier. All the years. Oh, oh we did a few years, in Andrew. Room, a couple years. Yeah. yeah. Look, here's the reality. We get a studio. In five years, bro. Son, it's crazy. <laughs> it's a long Christ. time. We need a studio. How do we not have a studio? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It, We've been homeless for five years making bread. We making got bread. bread. We got Where ads. Where you going? Brilliant Idiots is a very profitable podcast. Let me scare, let me scare, let me scare, let me scare Chris real quick. Because every once in a while, Sean, Sean texts me. <laughs> every once in a while, Sean texts me. Chris, no, I tell Chris. Okay, good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chris, we had these conversations. We need to have more. But I think you should start charging him for the studio space. And then he'll realize, well, if I'm already paying, I might as well get a studio space that we're consistently in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, yeah. what he's going to say is, oh, there's a deal and da, 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 da. I don't give a fuck. Get the studio space, and then we'll figure the thing out after that. Simple as that. We need the same space every single time. Put some fucking art in the room. You want a Rogan. Son. You want a fucking Adam Carolla. Yeah. You want a Dr. Drew. Yeah. I mean, listen, I think that loudspeaker should have been there a year or two ago as far as having that kind of setup, that kind of infrastructure. They got one downtown that we all use, but it needs no, to they be don't. bigger. That's not, that's not, that's, that's, that's fucking engine room. But he rents it exclusively. So it's only his things that are in there. You know what I mean? Who's that? A black woman eating chicken. Come on in. <laughs> <laughs> come on, come on, come on. Nyla, come on. G Spizzle. My God. Hello. How are you? How are you? Good. Nice to see you. We were supposed to go to wasn't we? Yes. How are you? Wow. Here. It's 11.30 wedding for you. Oh, that's crazy. My niece. So... Basically, yeah. What do you think? Uh, I think that I think that we need infrastructure. We need some infrastructure. We need infrastructure, bro. And I think that um, we have been we've been taking it into our own hands for way too long. But listen, we take each other to task. We do it. It's no, we, we take each other to task on this podcast. It's a conversation. That's Yo, all. everybody got to do their job. We if we're not delivering all. good content, Chris, you should talk to That's us. That's it. So far, we're delivering good content. Absolutely. So I would like a home. I like a roof. <laughs> I would like a roof. I would like a roof over Podcast my head. Podcast ain't got no roof. We got it. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. We be all right. That's all. So we just need a little, you just need some structure. Oh, you want to strike By the way, we want to really strike fear. By the way, it's you want not to really strike fear, what? Charlotte. What? Hey, if anybody out there would like to provide a roof, Bro, you act like we have, you act like we haven't had mad offers. We had some tons of offers. Yeah, but we're loyal to this fucking Chinese guy, Chris. <laughs> okay, <laughs> because we're good fucking loyal people. But don't take advantage of our loyalty. You know, it's like you cheat on your girl all the time. She keep taking you back. You're not gonna stop cheating. <laughs> Mmm. Now let's not put that out there. Now, <laughs> black men, black men don't cheat, but you know, whites out here still bungee jumping. Want a little bro. forgiveness? You know yeah. what I'm saying for our discretions, right? G Spin, what's up with you, bro? What's up? It's my guy, G Spin. Walked walk into some craziness. Ah, Dude, we just talking. I had, I had nothing to do with the coup talk. No. G Spin, how's the agency life? I left. Get on the mic, G. Oh. 
What happened? Grand opening, grand closing. Really? I didn't like agents before I got there. I really hated them when I got there. No, <laughs> no, no, no. It was, it just, it, you know, it just- It wasn't work. for you? Nah, it wasn't for me. Okay. Nah, so I'm, I'm uh, working for uh, Timberland, the producer, not the boot now. Okay. So mm -hmm. gen general manager of uh, Mosey Music. My guy, oh. Timbo the King. Yeah, Heck. yeah, yeah. So, so I'm up here actually working records today. Really? Yeah. How does that feel when you come back into a place that, it's you know, I know I got you used to run? Code. I got the cheat code. Yeah. I know how to get through the, you know- Get through all the. What traffic. does working records mean for <laughs> us layman? Layman folk is layman is basically that paying, paying guys like head to plan. Yeah, nah, play, yeah. Nope. Exactly. Oh, by the way, I'm so glad that you're here. By the way. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I'm so listen, glad you're here. DJ Head, don't get down. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, nah, it's just basically making but the I programmers you know, DJ. slash DJs aware of what we, we got coming. And I'm kind of, you know. Payola? Little, no, 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 not like that. Literally just playing playing the records for them, getting ah. opinions. I'm, I'm actually jumping the shark a little bit because our deal is with Def Jam, and usually Def Jam would do it, but since I have the relationships, I'd rather. Oh, Tim got a deal with Def Jam now? Yeah, joint venture with Def Jam. Wow. Yeah. Was it, what, what, he was at Epic? No. It was Epic, Epic for a while, yeah. and he had a situation at Interscope, which he still does with One Republic and, and that stuff. So, yeah, so it's with Mosley Music, wow. which has been great, some GM there, and then we also have a management arm where we have a bunch of producers and songwriters. So just, you know, spreading myself out through the industry, trying to learn as much as possible as we go. Wow. For setting up for my next move. Ah, Aren't Which, we all? Yeah. yeah. Well, it sounds like you guys have already yeah. decided what your next move is. Um, I mean, listen, we, podcast wise, you we, better step up. That's There's it. A lot, a lot of energy in this room that's right all. now. I'm just saying, podcast wise, we've had a lot of offers. I guess not a. That's not a question. If you know, people know that. We don't need anybody. We need. Here's the thing. This is the game. Is if you have views, if you have numbers. You can get advertising for your podcast. Absolutely. That's not hard. I have a million different advertising agencies I can go call. They call me all the time asking me. I say no. So Chris can be the one that gets it via one of these advertising agencies, or we can go right to the advertising. That doesn't matter, right? What we have is the numbers. So what we need is the infrastructure if you're going to be part of it and do that. Yeah. Right? That's what you must provide. If you're going to produce, then you have to produce the infrastructure. Otherwise, what's going on? Let me tell you something, man. It's 2019. I don't know if people know it or not, but uh, nine is the highest level of change. This is a transition year. I'm making mad changes. Mad people getting fired. All right? Going, into, going into 2020. Yo, Charlamagne, let me tell you something. Hey, y'all sound like artists trying to get off the label. <laughs> I ain't trying to get off the label. We are the label. We are the label. I'm not, to, I'm not trying to get off shit. Listen, okay? Some good things are happening. Some good things are coming. I can't... You know, you can't talk about everything right now, but some yeah. good things are coming up, some good opportunities. Obviously, you have a pretty insane schedule. Yes. So it does complicate certain things. If we do have a city, a studio, it's got to either be in here or close to here so that you can come to it because you have a busy day. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, we get it. But you got to make that happen. Yeah, 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 absolutely. They have to, you have, that's your job. You have to make absolutely. it up. That's your one job. You're not, your job isn't to hand me these papers. I don't need a guy to hand me the papers. All right, all right, all right. right? I need you to produce the things that we need. Don't be listen. Uh, I'm a, this 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 conversation makes me think of a great word that Bishop TD Jake said on Sunday. Fired. <laughs> Did he? No. no. <laughs> but he said <laughs> but, but, but Bishop TD Jake was talking about how everybody always thinks ten is the bar. Mm. You know, on a scale of one to ten, yeah. everything is ten. What is she a ten? Yeah. yeah. But he said that you always have to go back to one. Mm. He said, sometimes we get comfortable at 10. We get to a 10 and we get comfortable. We just stay there. But he was like, the people who actually change the world and, you know, become uber successful or do the things like a Tyler Perry has done, they know how to go back to one. They're not but Going back to one is actually 11. So it's another level. You're just starting something new. You understand what I'm yes. saying? So but that's, what we, that's where we're at right now. There's fear with new because yes. you could fail. It could be unsuccessful. Absolutely. I mean, G, you know all so, about this. Yeah. You reinvented Listen, yourself. I, I left something I've been doing for 17 years because I had an opportunity to jump and I jumped. It didn't work. Okay. Yeah. So On now, to the next now, one. Now what are we doing? Yeah. Absolutely. Right. That's but that's got to be the attitude. If you're afraid of failure, you're afraid to succeed. Yeah. So it's like, we need to be able to do it. Even like, dude, for, for fucking years we were doing this and I didn't have Brilliant Idiots have its own YouTube. I didn't even have Flagrant 2 have its own YouTube. And I, there was fear. I was like, well, if I take it off my channel with all the... the all the people, will people be able to find it? I still want people to be able to find it. And eventually we were just like, fuck it, pull the trigger. Don't be a bitch. Let's go. Yes. And immediately the people found it because they want it. Absolutely. It's like trusting in self. 
And there's That's one how I feel thing, about my new YouTube channel, See the God, C T H A G O D. Let me tell you something. Feel free to subscribe. <laughs> We're gonna get people over there subscribing to your <laughs> to your YouTube channel. <laughs> and I can't wait to to migrate people over to that channel because I think I, I think YouTube is actually the space where you're gonna have the most fun because outside of social media, this is gonna be the first time in your career where you run everything on the channel mm -hmm. and you are going to be intoxicated with that type of control. Mm -hmm. And I'm just so fucking stoked for you to get in on that. Cause this is what I've been wanting to, I've been probably harping on you to do this forever. You know, yeah, just I had do one more back of your day. shit. I just didn't, I don't know. Hey, why, have, why? why you wait this long? Why have you never like, cause he's getting millions of dollars. Oh, it's hard um, to be motivated when you got millions of dollars. No, it's, not that. it's just that we, we was we building a breakfast club. No, so, I'm saying just to, to do like your own YouTube channel, just to put your well, own because, shit. Well, because because now is I've I've got so much content on my own. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like I have, I have so many people requesting me to do one on one interviews and things of that nature. It just makes sense to do it for it to live there. Yeah, it just makes sense to do it. That's all. Yes, hundred percent. I love it. I'm very excited. Good things. We we done shitting on Chris. <laughs> do you have anything else to say? Nah, just, you know, it's like I said, I said, it's 2019. We're going into 2020. It's a transition year. Everybody got to step the fuck up. But I'll be honest with you, I don't think it's, I don't think everybody built for it. I just think some things have run their course. And you have to know that too. I'm not saying that about Chris in general. You know what I'm saying? That's shots at other people around me. But everybody, everybody, some things run their course. Really? That's all, yeah. Who do you, who, can we talk about who? No. No, no. Why would you do that? They'll find out. <laughs> Why would you do that? For? You, you got people know, shaking not, in their not boots. Talking about it puts everybody on alert. That's Absolutely, got everybody Ooh. looking in the mirror saying that is mm, that is very good. It. But listen, I'm, what only, more can I do? Yes, yes. But, the, but the only reason I'm putting pressure on everybody like that because I'm putting that kind of pressure on myself. Yes, you know what I'm saying? Because I don't feel like I don't feel like I'm where I need to be. You know, what right? I, mean? I got goals. I got things that I want to accomplish. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not sure that uh, you can you can help me get there. Yeah. And that's, that's really what it boils down to. You have confidence that you can get there. Yeah. And especially if, when you look around and a lot of stuff that's coming to you is already, it's because of, Cause cause of you. Doing. So what are you doing to help facilitate that's this? It. Are you just taking a, a little piece of things that are already coming here anyway? That's it. That's it. Simple as that. How are you bringing me money? And I got people around me that's constantly pushing me like, yo, this, you need to be, like I got people on my ass right now because they're not happy about my positioning, so to speak. In what? Um, because they just see they just see more for me. What What do you want that you don't have? Um, I don't want to say right now. That's fair. Yeah. Can I tell you something? Uh huh. I don't know what you want in its entirety, but I promise you, outside of being in the next Terminator or like an action movie, there is nothing that you can't have on your own. Well, now I want to know why I couldn't be in the Terminator movie. <laughs> <laughs> why couldn't I be in the Terminator movie? There's no black people in the future, buddy. Right. I'm sorry. No <laughs> <people>. <laughs> I thought you were about to say there's no black Terminator. No, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> Dude, imagine how fast that Terminator would run. That movie would be 30 minutes. By the way, <laughs> there are no black people in any future movie. No, you do realize that, right? No, no. They, what movie was Will Smith in? Aren't all of his movies? I Robot. I Am Legend. He was the only person, period. No, all the white oh, people no, left. Woman. Yeah, they all left. All the white people got out of New York and the one black guy stayed, man. That's <laughs> fucked up, bro. This is a metaphor Men for gentrification. Yeah. What, what, Men in Black was in the future? Nah. Yeah. Oh, that was the, nah, nah, nah. Nah, Men in Black is now. Men in Black was now. They just got futuristic go shit. I'm going to stick with that one. I don't remember iRobot. I think iRobot wasn't even that crazy. We're talking future. about future, future, future. Post-apocalyptic shit. In the Star future, Wars ain't no black people. We got green people, they purple people. Uh, who, it's like What's one. No, James Earl Jones. He was, he was the voice. Darth Vader. He was the voice of Darth Vader. Yeah, he was a white guy with a black voice. In the new Star Wars, they got the... The yeah, black kid, yeah. They got Samuel Jackson in and they had to like do whatever, you know? It's a couple. It's what? a couple black people. Guys, I don't know what to do. Why know, is no black people in the future, show? Because <laughs> you don't clean your necks. You know? Uh, your day, necks I'm are dirty, bro. Guys you guys you guys don't <laughs> clean your <laughs> necks, bro. Like, Listen, we learned about, about, about it. <laughs> we, got, we got the wet wipes. We proved it. There, there, there's, no black people, there's no black people in the future because white people killed us. Facts. With the Popeye's chicken sandwich. West Coast. Okay, that's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> Kept dropping chicken <laughs> sandwiches. You know they drop it again in November. <laughs> Until you're for out. Real? Yes, they drop it again in November. Are they really? Yes. What do we got coming for February? 
Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> the whole chicken. The whole family. chicken is just fried. I already told y'all what it's going to be. And I'm not gonna... We found a way to take <laughs> the bones out the whole chicken, but the whole chicken is still there. Black told... people lose their mind. I already told bro. y'all what it's going to be, but I'm not repeating it. What? I'm not doing it. The whole it. chicken what? sandwich. I'm but no it. bones. We got but all no the bones. bones. How these white people got the bones out the chicken? I'm going to tell you something, though. <laughs> The reason, the reason there's probably no black people in the future because we got the fuck out of here. <laughs> right. Let's go. Y'all went to, y'all went bro, to Mars. No, the way it's looking right now, it's time for people to get the fuck out of here, bro. Where the fuck are we going? I have no idea, well, but I'm y'all better figure you. it the you know fuck out. <laughs> y'all, listen, the way Trump is running this shit right now, bro, <laughs> y'all laughed at me when I couldn't pronounce fascist, and I was saying this is a, we under the a fascist, fascist, a I fascist see, regime. I, I still feel uncomfortable when they ever, say that, bro. Way. If when we you look at me, if you don't think we're under a fascist regime, the world so fascist now. Regime. Say that again, <laughs> fascist. If you don't think we're under a the fascist, fascist regime now, regime bro, ever. bro, your lips are so wet from saying <laughs> fascist. Don't, don't, listen, don't try to distract us from what the white man is doing. All right, <laughs> okay, with a little mispronunciation, but Trump, that motherfucker, All Trump do don't is... give a shit. <laughs> yeah, he don't. No, he he is wiping his ass. With the constitution. Maybe we could all move in with Tyler Perry. You know what I'm saying? Move down there on the on the shit. Bro. And get the maybe, fuck out of Maybe that's what Tyler's doing. Maybe Tyler building a compound. You know all the I'm houses saying? are built to code. To code, maybe. I don't fucking know. All I'm saying, I mean, like, yo, Donald Trump is wiping his ass with the constitution. Impeachment inquiry. Fuck your impeachment inquiry. I'm not showing up. Subpoenas, please. You know we do we know we dodge those. Kiss my ass, suck my dick. What you gonna do about it, Nancy? Mm. I need a I need a whole house vote for me to even show up. Fuck you. That's hey. what he said. Yes, Teflon Don, bro. Fuck you. Don don't care. It, it, but it's unpatriotic. It's not the American way. Now listen, yeah. nobody believes in America more than white people. That's true. We love America, exactly. bro. So why? <laughs> why? I love America. Yes. So I love yes. America, bro. Real yes, right I now. love America, yes. bro. It's so dope. So how do you feel about that guy wiping his ass with your constitution? What? <laughs> yes. I thought we were talking about America, bro. Why you gotta why you gotta do that shit? What? The Constitution. Son, I don't even know all the amendments in the Constitution. I only know the first two. Well, Trump is fucking he don't give a fuck about none of them. Which one is he breaking, so I know? Right now it's obstruction. Obstruction of what? Obstruction of Congress to do their fucking job. If uh, if Congress is asking for an impeachment inquiry yeah. and Congress is saying, hey, we need these we're subpoenaing these people, and Trump is like, no, don't fucking show up. No, nobody remember, shows remember up. You were in school and they taught you checks and balances. Of course, there's no, there's checks, no checks and balances <laughs> anymore. I love, no. but but how does the checks and balances apply here though? Because the Congress oversee the con- Congress is supposed to check on the president. Like that's their duty. Well, they all check on each other, right? right? But but I just don't understand how how the checks and balance system applies to like this right here. Like I understand like to make a bill become a law, like it passes through the House, then passes through Congress, and then the Supreme Court has to say that it's just. The Constitution right? is in place to keep uh, America from ever having ever I will having tell you dictators. One thing, though, hundred percent, and, and, and Trump is dictatoring this shit right now. I, I guess I'm not saying that you're wrong. I just want to know which thing is not being checked. I don't know here. what the technical shit is. So obstruction but, is telling people not to show up to a subpoena. Absolutely, and and they must show up to the subpoena. Pina, right? If you ask someone to be there, they have yes. to show. So those people are also breaking the law by not yes. going. Yes. Ah. All of them. But he's he's giving them immunity. Dude, I'm all about the law. I will tell you this, though. I think yeah. Pelosi jumped out the window by not getting the vote first. Dude, she's a fucking it. retard. No, well, in terms no, they of said, they the said actual con- impeachment, it, they have to vote to impeach. No, they don't. They yes, you do. No, they, yes, I'm going to read it to you. I read it today. You I, have to. Nope. I read it today. Okay, it, so here's she, the thing. What she did was that she put a formal request for there to be an inquiry, but there wasn't any actual vote that has taken place yet. She showed her hand. She showed her hand before is she what even. You, is what you're saying, right? Did you guys? Did you guys read the? Her. Did you guys listen to the conversation, or like hear the conversation? Or I read, read the transcript. transcript. Uh, we 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 listened to it. Alex and I listened to it in the car, and it was an interesting thing because Trump knows exactly what he's doing. But from what I listened to, there's nothing you can pin him on. He yes, basically can. You can't. You can't tell a foreign entity to interfere in a, 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 a potential political candidate. And by the way, he doubled down on it on the White House lawn and said, not only should Ukraine investigate the Bidens, China should do it too. Right. Right. So what? What? But he was joking with that. He said. He said he was. You can't joke like that. Joking. You're the president. But he, what I'm saying is, if you listen to the transcript, right, he very uh, specifically spoke, and he wasn't saying, "Hey, you better do this, so you're not going to get that." He never said that. He earlier he held back the aid, though. He early no 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 he never but he never said I'm holding it back unless you do this for me. He earlier said, "Hey, America's been really good to the Ukraine," right? And then he goes, 
way better than the other European countries, right? We've been really good, right? They talk about some other shit. And then he goes, hey, by the way, it would be really great, which is a better way, another way of saying, you better do this. He knows how to talk. He's a drug dealer. He knows how to it's, talk on the phone. You know how to talk on the phone. That's that doesn't mean he's not doing he's, something he's illegal. He's a drug dealer. Exactly. Now, yeah. but here's the thing. If you're a drug dealer and you're talking on the phone and they can't prove that what you're saying is drugs... You can't go to jail. Yeah, but the when implications you, were obviously there. The yeah, implications that so we could sit here and go, we know what's going on. Right. But can a court of law yes. put him in jail for that phone call? I don't think. Yes. Maybe for this subpoena shit. No, when you got Rudy Giuliani on TV, oh, right? He's out of saying, the "Of course, I told them to investigate." And you're telling on yourself, like they, they all. You know, I'm gonna tell you what Trump is the master at. And right. everybody needs to everybody needs to own. But you wouldn't people. investigate your opponent. Like, how did we find out that he had a video where he said he grabbed girls by the pussy? You investigate your opponent. That's exactly what you do. The question is whether you are leveraging American funding of another country and American aid to get that information. And I don't think, from what I heard, you could prove that in a court of law, even though it was clearly Here's implied. The thing, though, foreign foreign entity you can't get a foreign entity to investigate your opponent. Oh, is there that. a rule against that? I, yeah, I didn't. you can't get a foreign entity yeah, to investigate your opponent. Yeah, it's just you can't get Ukraine or China. This is American business. Yeah, but if I want to dig up some, if I want to dig up some tapes on fucking Trump grabbing pussies, yeah, but you can't get a foreign entity to do it. I thought that's what the Dems Especially did I with think the Ukraine. With where Trump. there's so many conflicts of interest. I mean, you got Russia that you know invaded them. You know, they're right. Still trying to get it back, and we know what Trump's relationship is with Russia. So, right. I mean, there's so much. Such a gray area. Yeah, and Pelosi, Pelosi said this on CNN. Uh, there is no requirement under the Constitution, under House rules, or House precedent that the whole House vote is needed before proceeding with an impeachment inquiry. Right. I think he just in there doing what the fuck he want to do. That's exactly what he's doing. And, and daring a motherfucker to, to try him. Like... He no, he's knows, shaking. He knows the... No, he's shaking he's now. He's shaking now. He's before, shaking now. Before, he was testing their chin because he know they was cowardly as a motherfucker. And now he's shaking. Now, now he's a little he's nervous because he's yes. on overdrive with the fucking videos. He got all these produced shits. He's doing the big conference in Wisconsin yeah, we're also or whatever. getting closer to the election. We're all year and, out. But right, the, the, but the he's, he's rolling out a lot of content, The illest bro. thing Trump does yeah. is he, he, he does things in plain sight. Mm -hmm. When you do things in plain sight and nobody checks you on it, what does the general public think? It's normal. Mm -hmm. Yo, here's That's a question. It. Here's a question. Because it's it's funny to see the 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 new appreciation, love, and an almost infatuation with George Bush. Uh, oh no, that went out the window this week. What I thought mean? that too. I thought that, I thought that people loved George Bush too until this week when so he he was right? sitting yeah, by Ellen. You saw Ellen what Ellen game. said. Oh, yeah, she, she but she got killed. Ellen came out and defended him. Yeah, but she got killed. Nah, she got rewarded. Maybe well, I'm operating yeah, in a different she world. She got rewarded post, but the fact that she even had to address it in the first place, I think, showed you where the left is still with Bush. Of course, of course. This, it seems like some of the left is upset at Bush, but I've still seen a lot of tweets like, remember better days? And there was like the Obamas, the Bushes, and then one other president maybe hanging out. And I mean, let's I, keep in mind, Bush still was a super shitty president. He <laughs> yeah. just Yo, wasn't as shitty. Okay, fair enough. So the question is- the economy up. Of that's, why people, that's why people hate George W. Bush. He Outside the economy, the economy wars, economy. like let, there's tons of and different war, things yeah, you could be hundreds critical of. Hundreds of thousands of people dead because of George Bush. You yeah. could be so critical of George Bush, right? The question is this, is if he eventually has come to a place where people appreciate, like are okay with him, find him charming and find him funny and they're he just cool. Wasn't a fuck, he just wasn't a dirtbag. I mean, that's the difference. He just was a shitty president, but he wasn't. I think if you get to somebody's core, I don't think it at his core. I don't core, give a fuck about my president's core, yo. If you yeah, kill, in, no, 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 if you saying, kill a million no, Middle I'm Eastern saying, people, I'm, like, that's diff, that's something you care more to right. fuck about. Like, if you destroy the economy for personal gain, that's something I care more to fuck about. I don't care if a guy kicks a puppy in, in private. Like, what I care is what you do to the world and how you affect the world. So my, my question for you guys is, if we can accept George Bush, somebody that literally Kanye was, George Bush don't care about black people. He was the most hated motherfucker president. I don't think people accepted George Bush, bro. Bro. I don't think people in my community. Yeah, they was killing George Bush. Jada kids was like, Bush knocked down his towers. George Bush was the Antichrist. Right. Yeah. No, no, no. They hated him then, and but now it seems like there's some acceptance. Now. No, I don't think no, so. No, no. I think, I think he's taking pictures of Michelle. I think that's mainstream America. I think that... People, people That's where I'm from, left yeah, they don't fuck with either one of them. They just don't fuck with Trump more at all. But why would they not fuck with Trump more? Why? What? Why? What has Trump done? That's what, what has Trump done? This worse to black people than what Bush did? I don't think that I'm not. I'm not on that stance. I have a whole different fucked up percent. What I'm saying is, I think the majority of people that I've talked to think that they don't like the way that he get down and the way he's boisterous about it. You know Ooh, what I'm saying? Trump? Like, yeah. Like, I thought they gonna, like that. Like, if you go, no, certain people like that. Glasses yeah. Malone? Mo exactly. <laughs> most <laughs> people, glasses. Most people, <laughs> like, Kanye, I was talking Kanye about, West. like, yeah. dealing, with, yeah. dealing with a woman. Most people want to be coddled. 
That's the truth. Nobody wants to be like, hey, your album was whack. Yeah. They want to hear, oh, it's not for me, mm-hmm. or this and that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I feel like the general population feels that way about their president. Trump does no coddling. Man, fuck that shit. I ain't fucking with that I don't shit. think he know how. Yeah. I don't, I think you know what I'm saying? That's, that's interesting. How, I think his emotional IQ is so low, he don't know how to coddle. Yeah. Why would he ever have to coddle? Yeah. He Why would Don, exactly. Why would yeah. Donald Trump ever have to coddle? That's what yeah. I'm saying. But that's what I think the, That's what I think it is. And mm-hmm. I don't think that for the people who did, the, the minutia of people who did fuck with Bush that I know right. probably got that from him. I guess, okay. Obama was an yeah. ultimate coddler. You know what I'm saying? Like, he was like, oh. So like, is Clinton. Exactly. Yeah, they're going to say exactly what you want. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. It's just it's just curious to me, like that people would hate him more than like let's say say Bush. When clearly, at least with the black community, it seems like Trump has made a way bigger effort than well, no, any president. What did you right? just say? Though you said something earlier. You said um, you don't care if you know a guy kicks a puppy. You know if he's doing like is, is if he's doing private, extreme his, shit that's fucking up shit everywhere else. Yes, that's the same thing. Like you can't. I'm not. I don't care. Like yeah, okay, yeah, the economy's booming. For black people, but we talking about like the end of democracy as we know it in America. How's that fair to anybody? Right. You know what I'm saying? Like that's not right. fair to no to no one. Like the only the only people that's gonna survive this shit is the elite. Right. Like, right. That's the only people that this shit is benefiting. Yeah, West but I Coast. think I think that's their gamble that, that it's not gonna pay off. Like the, these elite have been elite for hundreds of years, maybe a thousand years. Some of them, right? By the yeah. way, though, it's not the elite that that voted Trump in. It's the Poor middle exactly. white America. Right. Which is another fascist tactic. Act like you give a fuck about people like that. Exactly. When all you're really doing is lining the pockets of the one fucking percent. Hundred percent. And it's and it's a genius move. And uh, it's a tactic that the elites use, right? And then like it's part of the reason why they've been able to like stay in power for all these years. And you've seen little times in history where there were revolts, right? You saw in France, you saw it, I think in Russia. Like you saw these times where like the what was it, the proletariat? I forget what the fancy word is it, but the poor people basically fight back, right? And I think the elites have like learned, they go, okay, we can't squeeze these people too much. If we squeeze them too much, mm-hmm. they revolt, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Especially in America. Mm-hmm. Don't go around squeezing these people because they I, got guns. Bro. I don't think they, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think any side fears that type of revolt in America. I think revolt, America just got it too good, bro. That's, like America got it too but, good to ever truly revolt. Because I don't they're see not it. squeezed enough. What I'm saying is once you squeeze them to the point where they have to choose between survival and robbing you. I don't think we ever get to that point. Remember we talked about that on the podcast before and I was yes. saying how I like, agree with that. even if you're poor, you can still survive. Because it's American poor. It's 99 cent burgers. It's, it's American poor. It's, 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 it's low income housing. Like it's some place you can be. If the, if, if the homeless in America aren't revolting, who's going to revolt? That's a fact. Because well, the homeless in America... And that shit got to be frustrating. No, nah, the homeless in America for the most part are, are dealing with mental illness and drug use. Right? So it's not like... For the most part, the homeless in America are are I mentally ill. I would and, love to know why that guy killed all those people in Chinatown this weekend. The homeless guy. That was crazy. By the way, he, he was he was out of his mind. But he'd be out here sometime. Yeah. He killed four people in Chinatown with a fucking stick or some shit like Wait, that. Wait, for real? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. This weekend. I have they, a they horrible said, joke to make right now that I'm not going to make. <laughs> Yeah, they but said, I just they needed to let everyone that. know that I had it. Yeah, I <laughs> he didn't talk to anybody. Uh, just random. Yeah. Random taking out a homeless guy. Just randomly took out. I don't know if he meant to kill Asian people. He just happened to be in, in Chinatown. Because he used to hang out around here. Right. Yeah. Why? Did you recognize him? What? Chris, the, our security here told us. Oh. Chris. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, I yeah, thought yeah. you knew him. This is like yeah. a guy that. It was on the news. <laughs> oh, Chris Moreau. Should we have a nice little combo? Let's pay some bills. Let's pay some bills. All right, good. We, we can put a button on this. Sorry. I, we, we'll get back to talking about other homeless people. We got to talk about us first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Guys, best fiends. If you're looking for a fun way to pass time while engaging your brain and enjoying breathtaking visuals and a gripping story, your answer is best fiends. Best Fiends is a casual game anyone can play. Best Fiends is a unique, exciting puzzle experience, unlike any other puzzle games that are out there. Plus, they update the game monthly with new levels and events, so it never gets old. You're not beating this game. It continues to grow. More challenges. Oh, by the way, you don't need internet to play it. That's pretty awesome. You get on one of those planes that doesn't have internet, you're just staring at your phone, Hmm. thinking of something to do for six hours straight. No, you don't have to do that. You get on Best Fiends. You play, engage your brain, fun puzzles, collect tons of cute characters with Best Fiends. Download the five-star rated game on the Apple App Store and Google Play for free. That's friends without the R. Best Fiends, F-I-E-N-D-S. Okay, we're back to the show. All right. Should we have an intervention? Yo, Chris Moreau. Chris Moreau, come on in. Chris Moreau. Chris, I'm glad you came because I don't ever want you to think that we're talking behind your back. 
Mm -hmm. up, Chris? Okay. Yeah. Look how happy you are. <laughs> you know, every now and then we have to have interventions. We got to have combos, man. We have, to, we have to take people to task. Yeah. Andrew, go. Chris, where's our studio, Chris? Where you want it to be. Look how Ooh. look how slick this guy is. I like is, that bro. though. That was some very look how slick Bill Clinton this guy. just got caught cheating, you he know did. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where you at? Yeah, where, where you, you at? <laughs> while you in another while you in another woman right now. Your girl, like, where you at? Where you want me you to wanna be? You want to do it here? You want to get a separate space? I I'm want with a dedicated I space. I Charlemagne wants a dedicated space, and we want you want it to be outside of this building. I don't care. I okay. want it to be convenient enough for Charlemagne. But we've had this conversation for a we while. We have, but okay. I also don't have clear marching orders, so we can you can give me those clear marching orders right now. We have had clear marching orders, but okay. we okay. will. I didn't know the Chinese take marching orders from Americans. <laughs> <laughs> Keep those legs down. <laughs> Things are changing. <laughs> okay. Um, so it can be here. This is not about the marching orders. You are waiting to see which deals go through and what's going on. So There's don't make of... it about the marching orders. There's other things here. But we need a but dedicated studio. Continue. We need a dedicated studio for this podcast. Charlemagne and I, met, we agree on this, that mm -hmm. we need something convenient, obviously, for his schedule. Okay? So it can be in this building. It could be next door. It could be a block away. But it needs to be something close, right? We can't go out to Brooklyn because then you're going back to Jersey. It's going to be very difficult, mm -hmm. even though I would love we go to Brooklyn. Um, and we need to do it, be out of respect for the people that listen to the show and watch the show every single every single week. What say you, Chris? I agree 100%. But what's the holdup? I've been waiting for certain things to play out. Obviously, it's not happening quick enough, so I just have to go ahead and do it then. We got to keep things in our own hands right. the way we've I'm been fine doing. with that. I agree. Yeah. The you criticism is justified. It. I'm not I'm not sitting here and saying you guys aren't right. Why are you so agreeable? Fuck. I mean, you're right. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> I wanted a fight. fight. I it's wanted like a fight, deep. Chris. No, 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 no. <laughs> you're right. You're right. God <laughs> damn it. These Asians right. are so zen about Listen, everything. Here's the thing about Chris, though. It's, it's not like Chris doesn't want the best for the podcast. It's not like Chris doesn't want the best for loudspeaker. You know what I'm saying? He's just working with the dick he got. Get one of them extensions you were He's talking trying, about trying earlier. Trying to make her moan, you know what I'm saying? He's trying to make us orgasm, bro. You just don't eat, yeah. add some fingers. <laughs> Use the tongue. Do whatever you need to do. Okay? Because listen, I I am a personally accountable. I'm like I personal accountability guy. Okay? Yep. You know if it was only me, no, listen, I'm doing it. And you've, to your credit, when shit hasn't done gotten done, you've gone and done it. Right. And I respect that. Right. I have a little bit, or at least I feel, maybe I'm reading it wrong. I feel like I have a little bit less flexibility in what I can do. So I'm a little bit more measured. But absolutely, the way you've done it is probably just what I have to do, which is just say, fuck it. Fuck it, do it. And then we figure it out afterwards. Okay. But we need a place that we can build out, look beautiful. Yep. Not even just for brilliant ideas, for loudspeaker as a whole. Absolutely. Well, they have, the, you have engine room and you can do whatever you want with the engine room. But we need, I'm not worried about loudspeakers. Right now, the only thing I'm worried about... You want a studio where up on the walls is going to be shit that's particular to this Listen, show, that yeah. tells a story, that has a narrative. It's ours. It's got to be I all ours. I did do one little thing, one tiny little thing moving in the right direction. Okay. I bought an iPad last night. We've downloaded... I almost <laughs> walked out. I almost walked out of the studio. I almost left the I studio. That's a little dick talk. I almost left I told the he's fucking doing the best. studio. I told, I told you he's doing Did the best he, come, he can do, Did he come? I said I need a studio, no, and he came I with... I told bought you he's doing the best he can no, do. No, 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 no. I'm I just, thought he was about to say, I just purchased his property. I didn't... Yeah. I bought a fucking iPad. I bought an iPad. It's a soundboard. What about an iPhone, Chris? Did you buy one of those too? So we can call you when we need we you. Walk before we can run. Okay. Man. All right, please. So Listen. no, we have a soundboard. We we're working on it this morning. Okay. Just to add a little element of the show. I'm not saying that that's anything, but what I'm saying is it's those little types of things. No, we're it's a very not. poorly produced podcast. No, it is. It's not. No, show it is. This is what this is what this is what I just baby. I'm cheating. Listen, but I did one thing. I use a condom. <laughs> Listen, I use a condom, babe. I, I, you're not going to get any STDs no more. No, I'm going to tell you something. No more. I agree with that. Now, I think that Taylor does a good job structuring the podcast. But me and Taylor had me and Taylor had this convo too, didn't we? We had this convo. If you listen to Jesus and Mero, yeah. if you listen to even Amanda Seals, amazingly produced, you listen to Joe Rogan, amazingly produced podcast with the sound effects, with uh, the, the 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 clips being inserted in certain places, like it's just it's just so it's a very good produced podcast. 
Like Rogan, it Rogan doesn't do any of the clips uh, inserted or anything like that. You start when you're the there, combo. The guy, that guy is right there. Whoever, what's the dude name? Listen, I've set this up entirely in his other studio. Really? Yeah, everything's set up for this. If we have our own studio, I can put all these things in play. This is in every podcast we already have. That's yeah. easy. I just need it in our own dedicated space. Like this thing that we have going on right here. We have, Alex? A we have a, no, not only, well, Alex, what? of course, but like, this, <laughs> this is a, thing? we have a traveling studio. This, what Alex is doing right now is the same thing that your nightly news is doing. He's doing all by himself what yeah. six people do on your nightly news, where he's switching in between cameras. All these things are happening while it's, while this is being recorded live. How could you ever want to keep immigrants out when you got somebody like Alex, when he can do all he's those different Puerto things? He's Puerto Rican. He's almost That's what I'm saying. an immigrant. You know what I mean? I got to keep it a little we bit. You got to keep immigrants in the country. You got to do it. They know how to work. Yes. My point is, if you give me a space, I can build into something. Even with the engine room space. We got it. We made it to look like a studio. You give me a space, I'm going to put it into something beautiful. You know, obviously... We got some things cooking that I can't exactly talk about just mm -hmm. yet. I'm very excited to announce. But for Brilliant Idiots specifically, all we need is a space. Get these fucking TVs out of the way. Get all this shit out of the way. We have a space. We go. And then we're off to the races. Then it's beautiful. It's been five years, guys. It's 2019. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're going into another, another decade. Time to take things to another level. That's all I'm saying. I agree. We're, we're, we're at 10 now, but we, it's time to go to 11. We got to hit 11. That's bro. it. We got to go back to one by going to 11. We had, it, just, it just makes perfect sense to me. I don't, you know, I don't know what to tell you. I agree. I'm on it. All right, damn. So that means we got to delete all the shit we said about Chris. Or no, we got to keep it. Okay. You can keep it. It's fine. It wasn't bad, though. <laughs> it was just. We're not, not bad it's nothing people. You've, it's nothing you've never heard. I mean, look. It wasn't bad. I'm sure it was, but no, I mean, it's bad. like it really wasn't. We're gonna, bad. Get, we're gonna get rid of the Hong Kong Fooey instrumental yeah, that we could, got behind could, it. But we could talk, talk, well, okay, but let's. I do want to say one thing about the soundboard since we brought it up. Yes, I think the way it's effective is when the sounds that we're playing are for our audience specifically, and by that I mean yes. inside jokes. I if agree. People start arguing, and we play a shots fired, pow, 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 or yeah. crowd, that's corny. That's not any. Everybody does that. Right. Yeah. We want it has to be stuff that only our audience recognizes and then adds another layer to it. That's that's when I think Yo. the sound effects are cool. Nobody gives a fuck about sound effects. Nobody's listening to a podcast because of sound man, effects. Man, it does make it sound bigger, man. I'm telling you. You know what makes it sound look bigger? When you have your own fucking studio and you have yes. You know sound it looks effects, professional man. when you have your own studio. You're there for an experience and you're having it. You know what? You go to dinner at someone's house, nobody's going, wow, this is great cutlery. That food sucked. <laughs> but what you're doing thing. is improving cutlery. It is a it is a it it does add Impressive. to the experience. I'm not gonna lie. Like it's like ambiance. You know what I'm saying? Like when you listen to Deez Romero, you know what Deez Romero podcast sounds like. Like if certain sound effects they use, certain like like Chris said, a certain inside joke. I'm not saying we shouldn't do it. do it. Let's add it. Let's it should be, but it shouldn't be the priority. Is figuring out a fucking soundboard because we're already animated. We so imagine don't you put need more animation anything. on it. Exactly. Like this is, we got what you need for this. Now we need the casing. We got the dicks. We just got not a fuck. That we. <laughs> that's it. We're the engine, we and we're we are the fucking Rolls Royce engine, and we're in a rice rocket. You know, listen. Y'all know how y'all dated guys that got big dicks, but they don't know what to do with them. Bring how do you podcast. not know what to do with a big dick? Sit on it. See but why saying? do you need a stroke game? Just lay on your back. No, man. I said, no. I lay on my back. I'm on my back. No, man. <laughs> I'm on my back. That's my game. That's your move? I'm on my back. <laughs> Yo, it's the, every shot is a back shot because I'm on my back. <laughs> so every once in a while, I'll do one of these little, like, hoo, hoo, like the little, I'll pop it up. And I bet, she, I bet she goes, Ugh. She go, yeah, a little popcorn. Yeah, you putting a little effort into it. Every once it's in a while. It's all about a little effort. I'm on my back. It's not enough effort <laughs> being put into this podcast. Charlamagne, I'm a back man. Back man. It's not enough effort being put into this podcast. That's that, all. We need more effort. That's it. You got big dicks. Yo, we got big dicks. You got two big dicks. You got a big <laughs> about that. black that'd a, dick. That'd be a great dick talk little sound bite. There you right there. go, right there. right there. On the Boom. soundboard. <laughs> I love it. Let's have the soundboard in, like, built into the wall of the studio. Right. And you got to be judicious with it. You can't hit it every two seconds. Did you say judicious? Yeah. yeah. Judicious. Oh. Like when you come on the mic, you go, dun 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 You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that definitely cannot happen, but... <laughs> 
That's all. It could be good. <laughs> With all this. Every time he leaves, it's just wong. Wong. <laughs> Listen, just need a little more effort. That's all. It's time to take things to the uh, t- t- to another level. That's it. It's not. We, we got to take it to the next level. Rocket science. What are y'all? What are we doing this for? To be the greatest. Hey, man. Well, there are a lot of good spaces in Chinatown, like five blocks away from here. So, <laughs> see the jokes that they tell. Boom! You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Listen, I want to be in Chinatown. I would go to Chinatown. What? I would go to Chinatown. Absolutely. Right. Nah, Chinatown's right problem. there. It's it's walking distance. Right. I'm not walking. Yeah, you saw what happened. That homeless guy just killed four people. But I so will that, get there. that now you want to go to Chinatown? I mean, yeah, I I'm think. with it. Let's do yeah. it. Let's I think Chinatown, no, all jokes aside, I think Chinatown's the right location. I think you don't have to move your car. We can walk there and back in five minutes. I think as soon as you start going up the west side, it gets more complicated. There's an amazing Chinese restaurant in Chinatown, too. Uh, maybe one or two. Charlemagne. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious. Charlemagne. Um, it's called Charlemagne, the Red Dragon. <laughs> if I don't comment on this, <laughs> we will question the integrity of this podcast. You just said there is an amazing Chinese restaurant <laughs> in Chinatown. Now, it'd be interesting if you're like, yo, there's an amazing Chinese restaurant in Jamaica, right? That'd be different you'd because be like, you're really? like, whoa, okay, yeah, you've got yeah, some yeah, Chinese yeah. people in Jamaica. <laughs> 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 Trust me, what else do you fucking think there is in Chinatown? Know. That shit is good though. Let me guess. They got Chinese food in there? Yes, man. They got these fucking duck dumplings. So so it's like, what's the not duck dumplings? What's the shit? What's the shit that you bust open? Peking duck, probably. No, no, yeah, no, yeah, dumplings, yeah. But soup, it, soup dumpling. No, it's the duck, right? Yeah. You slice the duck and you put it in this like wrap. Yeah, you wrap it, yeah. That's what it is? Yeah, I had some in Taiwan. That man, good. that shit is slamming. Slamming, slamming. Really? Yes. Wow. It's called the Red Dragon. I ain't been there in a minute, too. You want to go eat some duck? <laughs> <laughs> you want to fuck with some duck? <laughs> fuck with some duck? Let's go fuck with some duck and look at some spaces. <laughs> Yo, let's, let's do it. Spaces. That's it. We need our own. Right. Um, do we have any more bills? Yes, we do. Uh, announcing Intersect Festival, presented by Amazon Web Services, where music, art, and technology converge. Mm. Taking place December 6th and 7th at the Las Vegas Festival grounds, right on the Vegas Strip. Born out of the massive after party for their event conference and open to the public for the first time ever. Intersect offers an inspiring journey to culture and technology's cutting edge, featuring Foo Fighters, Anderson Pack, Casey Musgraves, Beck, Flying Lotus, Leon Bridges, Her, Spoon, Jamie XX, Thundercat, Churches, Brandy Carlisle, and many more to be announced soon, okay? Intersect isn't just a music festival. In addition to a diverse lineup of more than 30 music acts, this immersive experience features cutting edge digital art and interactive experiences like a post-apocalyptic dodgeball stadium, a video arcade and more and includes cuisine from acclaimed chefs in Vegas's best eateries. For a limited time, Brilliant Idiots listeners can save $10 on two-day general admission tickets to Intersect by going to intersectfest.com and using promo, promo code IDIOTS at checkout. That's intersectfest.com and promo code IDIOTS to save some cash and be a part of this incredible experience. Now, I don't want anybody to listen to this podcast and think that we're having all of this inside conversation about wanting the podcast to grow uh, for no reason. I was really inspired this weekend when I went to, um, you know, Tyler Perry's studio. And and, and I, even 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 if you're not black, you should be inspired by that because think about how old most of these studios are, bro. Like, this is old money, you know what I mean, that has built these studios, hundreds of years old, like generational shit. This shows you that something has to start somewhere, meaning, like, McDonald's had to start some fucking way. Like, we're, we're, we're seeing the new versions of those things now. Even when you look at social media, the Twitter, the Instagram, the Facebook, that is new shit. That's shit that came from our generation. So it's inspiring to see people build things that shift culture and are creating generational wealth for them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? 100%. So and, and Tyler said, man, Tyler said, yo, all he wants to encourage people to do is dream bigger. That's it. Whatever you think you're doing is it ain't, it ain't it. Dream Dude, bigger. You ever look at like um, you look at like a, a forest or some shit in the distance, right? You're mm-hmm. like sitting on I don't know a cabin or anything, and every tree looks the same height. Yeah. In the forest, right? Yeah. 
what you don't realize is that there is a little tree that is currently growing and then there's a middle sized tree and then there's a tall tree. It's like Tyler just became the tall tree, Absolutely, but that should have been growing for a minute. Nobody really looked at it. Absolutely. So it's like everything that we're doing, we're just different level trees in this whole forest. Absolutely. So we need to keep on watering to get there, but you should not be deterred at all just because you're not, the top fucking tree. And and listen, every tree starts somewhere. Like, you know, 100%. T- Tyler started, he was in place. You know what I'm saying? Then he mm-hmm. started writing his own place. Yeah. Then he started promoting his own place. Then he went to the movies. And mm. then he went to the TV. And in the process of doing all of that, it's like, you know what? Let me build my studio. He probably had the same mindset 100%. that we're thinking right now. But like, you think at that point, though, like, like, say he's starring in the play, you think he saw Tyler Perry Studios from that point? Yes. So, like, when you were doing radio in Philly, you saw Shook One. Yes. Well, not Shook One. I saw my first book. Okay. I definitely saw the first book. But now, it's like, yo, possibilities are endless. You know so, what the saying? POV is what? Five five years? Ten years? That's a good question. I always say that um, I like to see life in four-year intervals only mm-hmm. because, you know, that's how school is set up. You know? You go to first grade through fourth grade. And then, you know, you're usually in like ninth grade to 12th grade in college. You in, you know, 12th grade to, not college. Yeah, 13th grade to 17th grade, whatever the fuck it is. What is yeah. it, freshman to junior? Same thing, it's four years. So yeah. I like to, I didn't go to college. So I look, right. I like to look at it and know. You could have just said Olympics. What's up with the Olympics? Every four years. Every four years. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. That's what I'm saying. I like looking at things in every four year intervals. I think every four years you should gauge your life and see where you're at. Pivot. Yeah, I think, necessary. Yeah, I think that you can have like multiple levels of the dream, right? Like I think you probably saw like some crazy end goal early on and then you saw steps to get there and they were each goals. And the dream changes the higher you get, right? And then you get up to that end goal yeah. and you're like, oh shit, I could still do more. Yeah, because when you're down here, you see you, you see things a certain way. Yeah, yeah but I want to know like from people around, you know what, what I'm saying? Because I, I think it's more realistic when you have relatable, like how I just told you, like from you, like from, from guy code, did you see... Your stand-up special, you said, or from Guy Code? Did you see? Yes, theandrewshows dot com with all of these. From from the second I even you decided to do Guy Code or do everything on MTV, my whole goal was, my whole goal was building a following because I knew that that was the only security you could have in this wildly insecure business. Get the people. If you have the people, you have something. And I knew I had something to give the people. I knew I would outwork anybody. I knew if it was just going to be about hours of the day of work, I would put more in. But I had to find a way to access the people. So at the time, it was TV. And then getting on Twitter. And then I noticed a shift where like younger generations weren't watching TV. And I was like, oh, it's internet. And I went through certain things in my career where I didn't have the opportunities to do TV. So I leaned heavy into YouTube, right? And now all of a sudden YouTube is this... They just said today that uh, teens watch YouTube more than Netflix. Right. Of so course. it's like, you know, you know, you know what's about to kill? Quibi. Hmm. Quibi is going to kill. You know why Quibi going to kill? Short form content. Yeah. And it's all mobile. It is, it is the first content that's been curated specifically for your phone. So yes. you can watch a sitcom on Quibi. And when you watch it in up and down mode, it's shot for up and down mode. Yes. And when you turn your phone, the sitcom itself Yes. adjust to size. Right, they got and they got some shit. Cuz they shoot every sh- every shot with I think two cameras right on top of each other. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. And they got some shit coming. Yeah. You know why? I oh, like no, sorry, that? they shoot in 5K so that they when they edit, oh, they can zoom in and it doesn't lose value. You know why yeah. I like that? That's crazy. Yeah. I like that because they're not trying to uh they're not trying to stick to an old model cuz you have a lot of people that do that now. They do that in radio, they do that in motherfucking yeah, yeah. You know, uh, TV, they all try to stick to this old model. No, we're going to make this. We're going to make this work. We're going to make this work. No, you got to adjust to what the fuck is going on. What the fuck is going on? So I think what, I don't know if Quibi's going to work, but what they, what they, what the, 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 the attempt at it is genius. The reason why I I asked that question. I spoke to them, yeah. You going to do something? No, I said, I get, I, I don't know if they'll do it, but I basically, I sat down with this woman who was like running the stand up division. I was like, this is your whole stand up platform. If you want it, run with it. Um, I, I just like the idea that there's competition out there. Yeah. I want there to be another big stand-up thing because I want stand-ups to have the ability to sell their specials to more places. And when you think about screen time, any screen time in your life, you look at your phone more than anything. Here, yes, 100% uh, yes. More than your laptop, 100% than your TV, yes. everything. So, so here's where they could possibly win. And this is where they could also, it's, it's win or lose based on this one thing. I don't think anybody's downloading the app and then paying the money. If they find a way, and this is what, SiriusXM should have done from the beginning. 
if they find a way to be baked into your phone plan already, mm -hmm. you're if if I'm them, I lose money for a straight year. And I go, anybody who has AT&T, T-Mobile, whatever, you get Quibi for free. Yeah. It's already in your phone. Yep. You don't have to pay for it for a year. Go for it. Yep. Now we're addicted. And then they go, by the way, your year's up. It's going to be six more dollars on your phone bill. You're like, well, yep. I got to stop. I, I can't stop watching the replenishers or whatever the fucking That's show is. That's not a bad idea. You know what I'm saying? I think anytime you give away free product, you know what I mean? And, and it's dope product. Motherfuckers will smoke that shit They'll pay to smoke it But I will say I think content is always king Content yes. is king And I think about the first time I ever subscribed to Netflix Yep Yes I can tell you why Why? Because Orange is the new fucking black Interesting Everybody was talking about Orange is the new black so much That I was like I have to watch this fucking Interesting. show Interesting And so I downloaded Netflix And I watched Orange is the new black And I just by that time, they just kept throwing content out Throwing content out So I kept the shit yeah. Yeah. Now it's the biggest thing out there I think a platform like Quibi has to do the same thing. And Once, they've got some good guys behind it. Katzenberg is bankrolling has, it. Doug, has, Doug, has, Doug Herzog. Yeah, Doug. You know Doug is saying? there. Doug is there Yeah, to make people feel comfortable. Hey, why do you think the big, like, I was talking about this uh, on, the, like, at the station last week about, like, big corporations and networks not playing ball, like, with the new way of doing shit. They don't want new talent. They, they always, like you were saying, they stick to the old model of doing shit. It's a bunch of old motherfuckers still in yeah. control. Okay. And nobody wants to admit that they're wrong, and nobody wants yes. to admit that they don't know shit. Yes. Instead I was of just a... falling back and, and and letting these young minds tell them what is actually happening in these streets. Or, you should, yes. like, yo, it's the stupidest shit in the world. I hate when we have uh, focus blog meetings, right? And we have focus blog meetings, and people are in there. It's a bunch of 40-year-old, 50-year-old people in there, and they're like... Got the PowerPoint. Hey, what are 20-year-olds <laughs> listening to? Hey, I don't fucking know. I'm 41. How about call some of the 20-year-olds in here? Might be a good idea. What, what are women listening to? I don't know. It's too many dicks in this room. How about call some vaginas in here? What, what, what do black people like? Well, I don't know. <laughs> I'm, Lotion? I'm different. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm saying all that to say, call the people in yes. the room that you're trying to cater to and trying to, instead of trying to figure out what you think they like. Because you know what happens? Everybody moves off stereotypes, mm -hmm. yes. right? Everybody moves off how they think people are. Yeah. So guess what kind of content you create? Bullshit. Some character type bullshit. Some stereotypical bullshit that's not authentic mm -hmm. and people don't fuck with it. Also, and, think about how... Like think where where industries are going. Like that's how I always try to have a competitive advantage, right? Like I'm thinking about where industries are going, where content is going, where like using practice is going, and then how do I get there before them, bro? I'll like you know what I'm saying? Like is it's like even with podcasting, I already know what's wrong with podcasting, and I got an idea to make all this shit look obsolete. And if it works, it works. If it's not, I lost a little bit of money, but like. Visually, I have a way to where it just looks, this shit will look obsolete. But that's because I'm like, how do I, how do I put my Steve Jobs hat on? Remember when Steve Jobs would put out a new iPhone? It was shit all over the old one. It just looked way better. Yeah. Now these new guys that put out the iPhone, it looks just like the old one. Yeah. I had. Because they don't have no more innovators. Because they ain't no more innovators. Steve Jobs understood the value of going, this is the cool guy's table. You no longer at it. Oh, you want to be at it? We'll get my new shit. Mm-hmm. And that's what all of us should be tr trying to do to innovate with our business. How do we stay one step ahead? What are they? All right, people, when we were putting the stand-up clips on YouTube, or not YouTube, on Instagram, I was like, are people, I literally remember having this thought. I'm on, I'm on, a, on a bus, and I was like, looking at a clip, and I was like, man, I can, I'd love to hear this clip, but... I don't want to put my phone on volume because then everybody else could hear it. It could be weird. Yeah. I don't want to get my headphones out and put them in. Like, man, how do I solve this fucking problem? And then I realized, oh shit, I'm going to subtitle these fucking clips. Mm. And then I did a little research and found out 80% of people don't use their headphones when they're scrolling. And I'm Correct. like, well, all my shit is on your scroll. Correct. So I got to find a way to make sure you can enjoy my shit. And yeah, without having the shit play. Boom. Yeah. Boom. So it's how do we stay ahead? What were you saying? You were I was going to say um, I was having a conversation with somebody um, and I was trying to explain to them. And actually, you know what it was crazy? I was talking to Glasses about this shit yep. six years ago. Yep. I told him six years ago, I said, bro, TV's dead. Mm -hmm. And he was like, what, what the fuck you talking about, cuz? I'm like, look, everything is going to be subscription based. Music. Eventually, food is going to be subscription based. It is already. It already is. DoorDash. No, no, I'm talking about straight up food. 
think about this, right? So I told him I got this idea, right, where you you basically buy the licensing for something. So say Chipotle, Wingstop, and Panda Express, right? And then you have the you build it all in house in a commercial kitchen, and then you just outsource the delivery. You know what I'm saying? Where you cook it all in house in one in one kitchen, and then you buy a subscription. So I could order from Wingstop or whatever whatever I want for a set fee every month. Oh, Good I idea. see what you're saying. You see Good what I'm idea. saying? You've basically created the cable model with food. Exactly. Yeah, so but, also, of, but yeah. how do you how do you um how do you factor in inflation? Like when you know the price of chicken goes then you go up, up a dollar month. a month. Well, no, what he what he brings up a good point is that like the cost of making the one of food, goods. yeah, the cost of goods might change for the different restaurants. Absolutely. Right. And it absolutely will. But what you do is you you create a, uh, you know, a price. What I would question. Jeff Bezos model. Yeah. But what I would question about that is like, how does it save me money? How does it save me money or save me time? Well, because what I, I was having this conversation, right, about um, restaurants and shit like that, because of how I eat. I'm a single guy. I don't know how to cook. I have to buy my food every single day. Do you not have Seamless? No. So like Seamless is every restaurant in the city that delivers, you could just order via their menu. Mm. But you don't pay a subscription service, which actually makes sense because why don't you just pay when you eat? Now, the subscription service only makes sense if it's less expensive than if you pay every time. Right. And that... Yeah, I don't see how that could work with food. I think it's a great idea. Mm-hmm. It's your your thinking is right. What you're thinking of is like consolidating things that we already consume, but providing value and diversity within the consumption. Exactly. It's you, now you have to go. How am I solving a problem? Exactly. And if you're not solving a problem, you're creating one. You're creating you one. The way what Show said is very important. Every every innovative idea that you have is only to me is only innovative if it solves a particular problem. Yeah. Like but every, I was, everything I, that we love has solved somebody some type of problem. Even when you think about social media, social media has solved the problem of idle time. Right. You know, when Bored. you're sitting around bored. bored and shit. Connectivity even though, even with fans. This, even though there's this thing called books oh, you God motherfuckers forbid. could read. God okay. Forbid, but nobody wants to do that. Or podcast. Our, uh, but, <laughs> yeah, let's do a podcast for real. Like it's, 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 it's filled the void that people have for time. I'm just talking about progressive thought, right? Because the conversation I was having was more or less like, you know who should have been on the forefront of Uber? Taxi cab companies. Or they shitted on Hilton. They got fat. Hilton should have got in on Airbnb. Or a lot of those companies shitted on That's it. my point. Yeah, block, they block, block, back Blockbuster on... had the opportunity to buy Netflix. Exactly. That's a fact. That's, my, that's what I'm saying. Like, a lot of times, all of these different entities that are in place sticks a brick and mortar shit, and it, and it never works. It never works, man. That's why, you, that's why, going back to the bringing things full circle, that's why you cannot be afraid to change. Yo, that's why you cannot be afraid to. What evolve. about this? Though? That's why we're having this conversation on the podcast today, Charlamagne. You've heard the term: "If it works, don't change it." And that's where some people get caught up because I thought it was if it ain't broke, don't fix it, or if it ain't broke, don't fix yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Right? So it's like all these companies, Blockbuster and these other things, weren't broke; they were killing it. But what you need, I, I think that's a horrible uh, saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it or whatever that is, is because it implies that you shouldn't be constantly keeping your foot on the competition's neck. It implies that, Every, it implies that you're always, it implies you're at 10 and you're good. Go to 11, There's motherfucker. No other level. Yeah. 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 So it's like, yeah, it's like, even if you're on a top, even if you're the best, even if it's like, even the breakfast club is ubiquitous with, with radio and hip hop and all these types of things. It's like, all right, how can we level up again? How can we, what, what else are we doing? How can we take it to the next level? What are we doing that's better? Oh, all these other radio stations are just doing radio. Well, motherfuckers are watching our videos on YouTube. Why don't we just put everything on YouTube? Leveled up again. Mm-hmm. The YouTube was the level up, mm-hmm. yeah. right? So mm-hmm. it's like, what are we doing? That's why I get frustrated with the, with the, with the studio shit. Cause it's like, what we can do in the studio is more than just the podcast. Right. It's when someone comes here, we can have other content for brilliant idiots that we're filming out of our studio. We can have a big image that you take a picture in front of, like Rogan has. That's branding. Branding. It's like so now everybody's coming here. They're waiting for that moment with their picture, and then they're posting that picture on their shit. There's so many different things that you could do when you have a specific space that become iconic. Yes. That build your brand without you doing it. It's passive building. Right now we're homeless. <laughs> <laughs> well, just get a look. Every studio you go in, just bring a box, a cardboard box. You know what I'm saying? All this shit. Take a picture with this motherfucker. Right? Right. The moral of the story is, people, there's another level after ten. Mm. And if you're at ten and you're comfortable, and the things that you're dreaming uh, aren't making you uncomfortable anymore, then you're not dreaming big enough. Mm. That's it. 
So that's all we simply, that's all this podcast was about today. You know, dreaming bigger. You know, yo, it's October, motherfuckers. Y'all got a couple more months left. Yeah. Uh, last January 1st, you was like, yo, this year is my year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nigga, you ain't did shit. Mm-hmm. But the same shit you did, you in the same position right now that you was in last October. You haven't leveled up at all. You're not even at 10 yet. Mm. And you haven't even leveled up. Yo, we going into a new decade. Step it up. I don't know about y'all, but... My hunger level is different. Um, my comfort level is not comfortable at all. Well, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I just got just got a whole new set of long term goals and short term goals that I wrote out. And you know, when I look back at the last decade of 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 my life, I've crossed out every goal. I'm not even bullshit. I can show you my notebook. Every single term. one, bro. Every single one except for having a son. Yeah, but and he tried. I yeah, tried. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lord knows I tried. Lord knows I tried. But guess what? That's Everything not what God, short of g- genetic mutation, I tried. That's not what God, but that's not what God wanted. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And but, but everything else. And and by the way, if I didn't cross out a goal, I got. You didn't want. I it. got somewhere. Like yes. it, it, God took me somewhere else by by pursuing that. You understand what I'm saying? Sometimes when you um get successful or you continue your career. You find out what you really want. And a lot of times we don't know what we really, we we want what people tell us we want. They're like, if you're a comedian, you should have a sitcom. And then you do some acting and you're like, I don't really like this. Mm -hmm. I only had that dream because I thought other people decided that for me, essentially. So it's like, you might not have crossed out certain goals because you might've gone, gotten to them and be like, oh, actually I don't want to do this. Yeah. Why? Why? Bro, let me tell you a revelation I had because I it helped some kids when I went to the school. Mm-hmm. Uh, they were like, "Yo, you should do like because even me and Charlotte talked about it. You should do an album. You know, like put out some music and shit like that." And then I went to like set with a label. They offered me the world, and it was like, "All right, cool, let's do it." And then I was gonna put out some LA talent and shit like that. And then I was like, "I'm not a salesman. Yeah, like I'm not Khaled. So no, it's a salesman. I don't like. I can't go to a radio station and be like, oh, this and that. Like, I really don't give a fuck if you play my record. Right. I just don't give a fuck. So you know it's not for you to do. So I, why would I put myself in that in that discussion like that? I'm more so like I'm a content creator. Do you enjoy you know making the record? No. Then don't do. I it. enjoy creating the content about whatever the whatever the subject matter is. Instead of making a song about being happy, I want to sit down and talk to motherfuckers about, about being happy. About being happy. So with that being said, it's kind of like, I think that like what you were just saying, you can't let other people dictate your goals, Absolutely. your path and shit like that. And don't do Absolutely. what you think you're supposed to be doing. Yo. You actually sit down and figure the shit out. Don't play it safe. You know, something else Tyler Perry said this weekend, man, he said the main reason we got to dream big is because, you know, sometimes other people are tied to our destiny. Right. And, you know, sometimes <laughs> we're marginalizing ourselves, And when we're marginalizing ourselves, we're not realizing we can create things that are so big that mm. they can empower so many other people. And to yeah. me, everything that I want to do in my life right now, nothing is self-serving. Literally everything that makes me happy, everything I want to do is something that will directly impact and empower other people. Because that's what I really enjoy doing. Something you know what I'm saying? Whether do, yeah. whether I'm out here at these schools talking about the importance of mental health and mindfulness and getting these brothers to be, you know, the best versions of themselves or, you know, it's, 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 it's uh, helping you know, that next generation of talent or, that, or, or talent that I think is dope, mm-hmm. you know, helping them, you know, find out who they are and empowering them. Like, that's what I enjoy mm. doing. And you can't do that shit when you're homeless. Mm. I'm, you know what I'm saying? Mm. You can't set up a space for nobody else if you're homeless. You got a space for yourself. You got it. That's it. 100%. So, I feel a little homeless right now. That's all. We just need a home. Just a little bro. bit. Just a little bit. Just a tad. Just a little bit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh, no, I'm not going to say that. The house ain't big enough. We need a bigger house. That's all bro. I'm saying. My house, my house ain't big enough. I that's just want it. A house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the first goal, though. You know what that's saying? the first goal, though. Yeah. But you are gonna get a house? You gonna be like, yo, these walls kind of close. Yeah, we not homeless. I, I need mean, a little we, space. We not homeless. The house ain't big enough. That's it. Because you doing a lot. You putting you you put so many come out. You always putting other people's stand ups and shit out. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I wanna I wanna yeah. I wanna try my best to like promote stand up and you know the guys that I think deserve it and give them a shot. And, Absolutely. But also. Yeah, I'm just very excited for your YouTube. Um, I'm very excited for your YouTube journey, man, because you're going to, like, in my personal opinion, I feel like being a content creator where you put out your own content is the closest thing to being like a farmer nowadays. 
Like we're digitally farm mm -hmm. because that's our crops. Yeah. And then we reap what we sow. Only one thing I don't like about YouTube. Okay. And it's just, even, even though I understand it's a means to an end. Right. It's just, it's not ours. Yeah. Nothing is yours. I mean, you can create things that are actually yours, but the platform itself. It's, this is this is the thing. It's not you, we we got to get close. As, what were you saying? No, but I was gonna say you do utilize the, the platform to showcase. Oh, it is the yeah, 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 it is absolutely. the closest thing to yours. Right. YouTube is the closest thing you can get to yours. Now we can sit here and we can go, okay, but like, what if we have a you know a, a Patreon? What if we have all these other things? They're and they're great. Don't get me wrong. But at the same time, ask Alex Jones. They could take them from you at any exactly. time. Exactly. That's why I don't get I don't get caught up in none like you know, social media. None of that. None of that shit is really ours. Yeah. So enjoy but, it. But but outside of yours, what it is is this. It's a platform with millions of people. Actually, all the people, billions of people, right? The most viewed platform on the planet where you can put out the things that you truly want to do on your own timeline. You don't got to call iHeart and be like, hey, I was wondering if we could put this interview here. And then, well, let me call up four different people. And mm -hmm. then you're like, fuck this shit. You want to film it? You go. Hey, Alex, you want to go to Russia? Let's film some shit in Russia. Yeah. Hey, you want to drink out of a boot in Australia? And put out whatever we want to do, we're in control. It is addictive, mm -hmm. Charla. You are going to find... Because you're a content creator. I, I love but it. You can do that anywhere. I know. And don't get me wrong. I'll fuck I do. YouTube. You know I do. Saying? I do it on Instagram. Exactly. I do it on Twitter. I do you it on do all, it the, all different places. If you're a content creator. All you need is a platform. Facts. Man. That's it. Facts. That's it. You're a content creator. But I think it's also like what you do. You do it very well showcasing other people not being afraid to shine a light on another motherfucker. Like, I feel like that's needed. What's and the I, point? We don't have enough of that, in my opinion. That's I think that's where the biggest chip. I sent you a, a thing I posted and and I asked you if you feel the same way. Um, it was it's, it said, I'm not going to lie, the bigger my platform gets and the more people I help, the more I resent people with bigger platforms who do nothing. You goddamn right. So I like so when I see people with platforms and they could like empower a young DJ or a young per a radio personality or a fucking comedian and they just all oh, this all mine. Like I I just feel whack. like Bro, that's what I genuinely I feel so resentful to do. They're whack. Don't don't give them your energy but like yeah, I mean they're whack. I think you know Charlemagne's done an amazing job with that. I mean myself being one of those people but also a lot of other people that you've put on and um but, but like, yeah, I've just been tried to continue that. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I see guys like Charlotte, like Rogan, like who don't have to. Don't have to. Don't have to. Are, are not like personally invested necessarily in the people that are doing it, but it will happen. And like, I mean, look what's happened with my career. It's been pretty insane what, what's going on because of it. And I hope that I could do that for other comics that I feel like really deserve it to have like the right integrity. Right, with right. It, that I know would continue that. Go the road back. Exactly. And, but it's the right people. Like you can look at people like, hey, you ain't gonna help a single person. Right. You know? And those are the people that I care help, really. But the people that want to fucking do it, the people that want to put in the work, it's like, yeah, man, let's fucking, let's throw them a bone. If you hate the industry, create it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If you hate the industry, create your own. It's, it's just really that simple. So if Schultz gets a look, Hey gets a look, and then they go and they got the same type of energy and they're looking for the same type of energy that's in them and they give those people a look and next thing Bro. you know you're just creating this whole motherfucking energy this shit we, like wet gremlins we are the fucking industry like yes. that's what people don't know and like that's why I, 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 and I love the fact that, that you have this YouTube page man is because what we need right now like head you got your YouTube I got my YouTube you got your YouTube then we have all these other I have some other stand-ups other comics we can bring up younger people through our own systems. Network. We don't got to call up Vice. Yeah. We don't got to call up HBO. We can be like, yo, this guy's really the truth. Yo, hey, he's coming out to the West Coast. Yo, you should get him on the thing. You should blah, blah. And then all of a sudden he gets some of your fans. They like it. You have him doing the interview with you. They like it. You know what I mean? They come yeah. do an interview with me or do inside jokes with me. We can build up industry by ourselves. Mm -hmm. It's unprecedented what we can do right now. That's why all these systems in Hollywood are falling apart. The middleman is gone. Go it's over. It's over. <laughs> well, gonna come kill us. It's because we. Cause what? Take Nyla? Nyla? Dark. <laughs> what? Damn, Nyla. Yeah. I didn't come to. I didn't come to LA for to New York was, from LA to get killed. Yeah, I thought I'm you were telling us right something. Yeah. I'm taking say? somebody with me. <laughs> what she's saying is we're attacking the powers that be. No, we're not. <laughs> I understand what you're saying, but you know, how would that be? No, all of this shit is going. I'm on. very boister boisterous about how I feel. They, they, there's nothing they can do about it. That's why, like you know, how back in the day they would say, Michael Jordan, you can't stop him. You can only hope to contain him. That, that's, that's all it. they're all trying to do now. They're just trying to contain. And if they're the smart, motherfucking creatives, yeah. exactly. And, and and the problem is that they're trying to contain too much. What 
what agents and managers in, in Hollywood and that kind of stuff always did was just made money off of entertainment. Bro, they're product managers. Your product That's really what they are. They, that's all you are? Unless you're unless you're a create unless you're a manager that's a creative. Yeah. And you're actually like, yo, I got this idea for this talent. You know, boom. And then you can create that idea and with this talent those, and take it and shop it. Other than that, you're just a product manager. How many of those people are there? Not a lot. Yo, I honestly Not a lot. I think managers are useless. Don't get me wrong, like my agent. My booking agent does a lot of road stuff. Like he does outside of road. He does a lot of managerial stuff, but like everybody in my, in my crew does multiple jobs. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like Alex is doing more than just that. We all have Shout multiple out things. Shout out to immigrants. My boy, Mark, Mark Gagnon opening for me, but he's also doing other stuff, cutting videos, et cetera. But I don't need a manager to like take an incoming email and go, Hey, someone wants to give you $20,000 to do a corporate event. Well, thank you for answering the incoming email <laughs> about a $20,000 gig. I really appreciate that. Should you help me decide this, yes like or no? job is so hard. Yeah, what's your job? Like, yeah. it's, it's my, I, I, hey, we have a meeting set up with you with a casting director. For what? Do they know who I am? Yes. So direct some fucking auditions yeah. over to me. It's like. Well, I think the good ones are able to manage the the um, expectations of your... Like, uh, for instance, me, I'm all over the place, right? Like, I'll forget, oh, we got to do this. We I've missed flights. You need a babysitter. No, it's not a babysitter. You do. That's no, babysitter. It's not a babysitter. You, you miss a flight? iPhone. No, I get it's that. Like you get, that's your what assistant. Is, what I'm Wake saying up. is managing my, uh, my corporate relationships. So, like, if there's a business meeting, like mm -hmm. you said, somebody sent an incoming email, yep. I'll, me I'll either miss that meeting or something like that, yep. or not remember, like, uh, the, the, hitting somebody back or... Hey, that's a product manager. Okay, well, that's fine. Yo, 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 yeah. how about pull this back? How about pull this back? That's not even a product manager. You need an assistant. You need an assistant that you pay 40 grand a year, Right. Or whatever it is. Let's say let's say you spend forty grand a year. That's that's a full time assistant. Travel with you ever do that, right? Let's say you make a million dollars a year. Your manager to do that yeah, same let's shit. Let's say that. Let's say let's that. Say that. Again. Let's say that. Your <laughs> manager to do that same shit is going to take ten percent. That's a hundred thousand dollars. Okay. Or you could spend forty thousand dollars on this assistant. You could have a part time assistant for way less. You know what I'm saying? There's different way different ways that you could figure out how you pay. All I'm trying to say is. I, I do not understand. I've been with the biggest management companies. I, I've had the conversation with them, which is, I don't need a manager. I'm going to be at the meeting. What I need is a production partner, right? Are you going to be a production partner with me? And, and I'm 100% serious. Managers back in the day, they had all these connections with like HBO and Netflix and all these different like CBS and all that kind of shit. But what is a connection if it's just connecting you to something that nobody watches anymore? Or Mm. Right, like the people who are moving industry are us. Well, I think they like, those people will serve multiple purposes, like what you say with your boy and Alex and shit. It would be like you have a strategist, you have somebody who who can who who can we're, run. We're all the strategists. Well, I mean, yeah, but yes, but, I obviously have to run point. But I'm sitting down on every move, and I have people that I value what they have to say. And if I don't value what you have to say, then you're not part of the team. You know yeah. what I mean? Like. This strategists is, are creatives to me though. That's that's when like I you got to be a creative. Bro. When like I had to we, put you, out my first shit, I, I call that. Charla. I go, what should I call this? You're great at fucking naming. You know, it just comes to you naturally. What should I call this? And he's like, what's the project? I mean, I'm going to four different clubs, you know, four different sets one night. And he just goes four, four, one. And then just hangs up the phone. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, and that's what it was called. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was that easy. Four, four, one. I need it. I call my I call my manager. What should I call it? Well, I'll set up a management uh, a product oh, strategy God. meeting for. Oh my, creatives, bro. I agree with that. That's it, creatives. And don't I'm get me wrong, you that. need people to cross the T's and dot the I's. But everybody yeah. has a role. You know what I'm saying? Like cross the T's, dot the I's. Let me handle the creative and get out the fucking way. Get out the fucking. That's way. it. Until I figure it out. And once I figure out how to cross the T's and dot the I's, shit, it's a wrap. Shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's it. And then, then, then at that point, you're just regulating people to, to, to manage your time. The most That's valuable, it. as all of us in this room know, the most valuable commodity in the world. Time, baby. That's it. That's really what you're paying certain people for. I'll, I'm to giving you 10% for the time that I get back. Because I can't, I can't get on the phone with every person and listen to every idea. You know what I'm saying? Some of this you have to... Filter through, but guess what? Vet it, yeah. If you're not a creative, you can't filter shit. It don't even matter because you might hear a good idea and be like, you don't even um, recognize it. Exactly. It's like ideas got to come to me. I'll be honest, ideas got to come to I'm me with that. or people that I like really, that, idea. I, that like I really that. trust. You know what I'm saying? Like, but that cross eyes dot to t shit. 
like I need experts in those fields. My my booking guy, he's an expert at that. So I'm willing to you're you're getting you're worth every penny for the time you save for me and that kind of stuff like that. Al is an expert in his field. Mark is an expert in what he's doing. You know what I mean? Mm. Everybody got to be an expert in their field. That's it. No, Simple I agree with that. that. I'm, I'm down with the creative uh, side of things. You know what I'm saying? Like the person that is running point on your shit got to be creative. The guy you, my guy Salas, my manager, you always see me with mm -hmm. in LA. Like I literally would not be here today without him. Like where I am right now, we literally created everything together from scratch nine years ago. So that's your production partner. So that's not your manager. You You're like we call you call it that, but, but that's like somebody that's building creative industry and strategy and strategy. Yeah, that's your that's your partner, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 All right, listen, man. Just hope we gave y'all a little bit of game. Did you learn anything, Nyla? Okay. Learned we gonna she learned that you're going to starve her to death. <laughs> oh, no, and Nyla going to eat. Promise her lunch and not take her. I literally took notes. Nyla going to oh, eat. I'm downloading the Quibi app. I'm going to check out the Red Dragon. Gang. <laughs> <laughs> As always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant. Yeah. Oh, first, hey, give me your Twitters and all that. Oh, at DJ H E D on everything. Yep. And I check just, you out on what? Uh, Real 92.3, Los Angeles, me and Bootleg Care, 7 to, 7 to 11 every day, Homegrown Radio, me and Chuck, the Homegrown Radio podcast. And what about the Riverman Flow? Oh, shit. Come on, bro. I, just, I listen. On, I wouldn't bruh. expect to do church announcements. Um, Rhythm and Hip -hop Flow. Hip-hop cypher DJ. Yeah, Rhythm you know and Flow mean? is officially out, streaming now on Netflix. I was a part of that. It was a big uh, first hip-hop competition. It's not it's not corny. It's all authentic. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and then also, uh, check out those BET ciphers. I held those down, too. They, you, oh, you, that's oh, him. So what happened to Premier? The what? DJ Premier used to do yeah, it. Yeah, shout out to the OG man. Um, you know, I, I shot, I gave him love. I don't know what happened with that. I think he, from what I was told, he, from what I was told, mm -hmm. he didn't, he didn't want to do it this year, so they hit me up. Wow! So shout out to the OG. Somebody did tweet me that yesterday, but I didn't pay no attention. I was on the what, plane. Premier? Oh, me? No, I, I was looking through social media because I was on the plane, which was wild because I was on a flight with only three people. So I was on my 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 Wi Fi on the laptop. And I was just looking through Twitter to see, you know, because yeah. I think Blackish was trending because yeah. of the girlfriend's reunion and uh, Ben Simmons hit a three pointer. That shit was trending. <laughs> and then I was really, you know, I was really checking to see what everybody was saying about Duval. Yeah. And I was happy to see everybody was like, yo, Duval was killing he it, killed whatever, it, whatever. Yeah. And then somebody tweeted, um, yo, shout out to DJ Head holding down the the, the, the the turntables on the cypher. Yeah, I DJed all the cyphers this year. Wow. Yeah, that was big. Even the comedy big. one was dope. I felt like that was a that big. That was the best one. I felt like that was so like best cult one. culturally relevant. It Carlos was, and Chico bodied they that. They really did, yo. Yeah. Effortlessly. They fucking bodied that Let's shit. say how much I love, before, before we get out of here. Shout out to the 85 Shout South Shout out to Jesse Collins. Yes, man. I'm going to tell you why I find the 85 South Show so dope. Love these guys. When we had Uncommon Sense, you know what I'm saying? Um, I used to always use Carlos, always used to use Chico. I remember the first time we had DC on the show, and I remember executives saying, you don't understand him. We don't understand him. We can't understand him. I'm like, but it's millions of people down south who do. Okay? It's millions of people down south who speak just like that young man. Yep. Let him motherfucking cook. Let him cook. Okay? Carlos used to be on there being Carlos. I love like, it. Like that rap shit Carlos and Chico doing, they have been doing that like... Years and years ago, me and Carlos used to have a song called I Got Drugs for Sale. Yeah. Like, I love seeing them flourish, man. Hey, shout out to Carlos too, because uh and, and shout out to Chico too, because when we were filming that, Jess hadn't heard his verse. Jess Hilarious hadn't heard his verse. Oh, so that was a real reaction. So when she they had to redo it, but when she first heard it, she was like, What the fuck? Like ah. she just caught a stray. Like Yeah, when she was yeah. like, <laughs> it was like Jess, that was funny, we said, yeah. we said we said Jess. Uh, he said if she take off her wig, she a nigga. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot the line before that, though. Yeah, that shit was funny. That shit was hilarious. Both of them Jess just is another it, one, man. man. Phenomenal, man. I just, yo, phenomenal, phenomenal talents, man. Like, you can't, you can't, you can't, uh, you can't create what they do. And they're killing it on YouTube. Yes. They're putting all these clips up of their shows. I, sometimes I think they put the whole live show because they can improv the whole live oh, show. And Bro, I guarantee you Chico amazing. and Carlos was freestyling. No, I that those verses. I think they nah, sat they down. Gotta write some bro, I them. think they sat down. I think they do the no, Jay Z no, shit for, in their mind for the hip hop cipher. How many takes did it take them? They was, they was, they was. It was. I'm pretty sure they wrote it because they was ready. So, yeah. but they they ran through it. And I don't take perfectly. nothing away from them. They should write it because you want to have you wanna bars. Have, yeah. You want to have the things they remember, like. They do it on Wildin' Out all the time, though. Yeah, they're nah. nice, bro. Like, that should be but something. The, no, I'm, when they do the old man shit. It's great. So, yes. what you gonna do? They be on it. <laughs> Yo, you remember when she go body safari? What do you say? I don't remember what he said. Oh, you say, um, hey, I'll show you guys a, a, a interesting clip. 
this is of when you talk about like manifestation and understanding mm -hmm. what you're going to do and like setting goals and thinking about it, here's a clip and it's two clips and it's of Duval in 2010, which is 10 years ago. Yeah. And then in 2009 actually. Yeah. Well, yeah. this is 2010 and then this is uh, 2019. So here, here it is. Thank you. I'm not going to be happy when it's first to happen. Right now it's my turn. I'm, I'm opening up for him right now. So I'm going to be doing a lot of crazy stuff. Thank you. Uh, the same girl? No. He said, he goes, he goes, uh, they're like, it. they're yeah. like, you should, you should host the hip hop awards. He goes, it's his time now. It's going to be my time one day. And uh, I'm, I'm going to get there. I mean, it's funny watching that clip because I mean, I've heard him say that a million times. Like those are, these are conversations we've been having for the past 10 years. Yep. Damn. You know what I'm saying? Like literally. So to see him do that, it's like, wow. You his know what I mean? Open, his, his opening. Uh, I'm not surprised though. I, this, I just think niggas is late. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> I t when I see Duval doing shit like that, I'm like, oh, y'all late. Yeah. You know, but like he said, everything happens when it's supposed to happen. Damn right. Timing is everything. Now, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. If you listen to this podcast and you think we're just a couple idiots who don't know shit, you're right too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening. Guys, whatever struggles you're facing from depression and anxiety to trauma and grief, better help can connect you with a professional counselor in a safe and private online environment. It's so convenient. You can schedule secure video or phone sessions as well as chat and text your therapist. And anything you share is completely confidential. Best of all, it's a truly affordable option. Our listeners get 10% off your first month with the discount code idiots. So why not get started? Simply go to betterhelp.com slash idiots. Fill out the questionnaire to get matched with a counselor you'll love today. 